Hey guys, welcome to the pay-per-view. My name's Ty Wolfenden, but I'm sure you already know that. We're here in Ross Lovely Olympic Stadium. Uh, I've been racing here for 10 years, and uh, it's been nothing short of amazing. We've won a Polish league title, three individual world titles. Um, it's the best club in the world by far. I'm super stoked to get the best riders in the world here. Um, yeah, it's, it's an amazing feeling. The messages, they was when I asked them, they was like, yeah, of course, it'd be an honor, like all that sort of stuff, which was a little bit strange for me. You know, these guys are my rivals. But um, anyway, welcome to the pay-per-view. It's gonna be a great show, enjoy. I uh, hope you enjoy the opening ceremony. We're coming in from up there, so it'll be a little bit special, but uh, enjoy your night wherever you're watching from in the world. And uh, yeah, see you all soon. Yes, good evening and welcome to the Olympic Stadium here in Rostov. We have a galaxy of world champions and Grand Prix stars and a big crowd coming in too. And we are here to celebrate 10 years of service for Ty Wuffenden, his testimony event set to be a real spectacular. I'm Dave Bro. alongside me is the former world champion Sam Lomelenko. Sam should be a great night. Absolutely, I tell you, there's a lot of buzz going on here. There's just a lot of action. There's a lot of no noise out there, and uh, I'm sure there's a lot more action to come. Yeah, tremendous night in prospect, as we say. It's all about Ty, his 10 years with Roslav. Let's get some views, first of all, from some of Ty's fellow competitors on his career. Thank you very much. Uh, nice to see you as well. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it is a special, uh, special day for Ty, and uh, very congrats for him. Ten years uh, here in Wroclaw, uh, uh, great, unbelievable, very good. The day, is, the day is about Ty, and you know I've known him for a long time. We raced together first in Wolverhampton for many years, and I actually rode with him in Wroclaw. Uh, I think his first year here, so. Uh, it's all about him, you know, he spent 10 years here, he's helped the club to a championship last year and uh, you know, he's a great guy and uh, hopefully we'll have a, a great event for him. I'm also very happy uh, because I'm coming to, to today from the good meeting for the Thai. Thanks for Thai for the welcome to, to this meeting and uh, yes, I think so, have a good fun for the Thai. And for the people today, the, I think so, the many people coming today and also so good to make meeting for the really uh, Speedway fun. Yeah, you know, it's been cool. Everything so far looks awesome and uh, can't wait to go racing. Yeah, does this give you inspiration for your future possibly? Yeah, I've got a few more years to get a testimonial, but um, honestly, it's like being at a GP. It's pretty cool. Excellent. And what's your words about Ty real quick? Yeah, you know, he's been a huge inspiration to me, but also like a, a, a mentor too. You know, he's showed me that if you want to be the world champion, he's kind of given me like a roadmap, you could say. So, uh, huge inspiration and uh, it's an honor to race today. So these are scenes here at the Olympic Stadium. The fans have been coming in for the last half hour or so. Let's take a look at some of the riders because we don't have all the riders here because several are making a rather spectacular entry into the stadium. But as I say, uh, world champions, Grand Prix stars, a couple missing after a crash last night. We'll come to that very shortly. But when you have some riders like the double world champion Bartosz Marsling here, that just shows the respect that Ty commands. Absolutely. Full respect from all the guys. And they're here to have a fun. They also want to do some racing. They want to test their ability, and what better place to do it here on this Lutzroth racetrack? It's, uh, it's always uh, done some tremendous stuff for the guys. And we're looking up in the sky right now, so we're looking for a plane. Yes, we have five riders who are going to make a, a rather unusual entrance into this testimonial event. We know that Ty enjoys skydiving. In fact, he did so before a recent Grand Prix at Prague when he had a, had a good result. So uh, Ty Wuffenden will be amongst the riders who will be making their entry into this meeting from above, Sam. Yeah, he's actually had to pull. I don't know how many teeth he had to pull to get some of these riders to, to go up there with them. Right now, they're going to experience something that's quite unique. And Ty, as you said, has already been practicing doing his jumps. I think he's trying to get up there. He's close to 50 jumps at the moment, from what I remember him saying. So uh, there's plenty to go. There's Dan Buley. We heard from him earlier. And uh, there's uh, Freddie Lindgren as well. Yeah, These you saw Martin Vasek uh, go through the picture earlier on too. This uh, just indicates the uh, the strength of riders. We're doing the um, 
we're doing the uh, lineup for Crosby there. They're waiting for the plane to to come down as well, so uh, that will be interesting. Let me just talk you through a couple who aren't here, unfortunately, which is Anders Thompson and Mikkel Mickelson, who were involved in a crash at Voyens last night. We certainly wish those two boys all the very best. Uh, Anders Thompson suffering concussion, and Mikkel Mickelson with a knee injury. Here comes the plane, and here come the riders. Now, we're expecting Ty Wuffenden certainly to be the, was the first to jump out of the plane. Whether that means he'll be the first to land, of course, is a different matter. But Ty Wuffenden, uh, Chris Holder, uh, is also, has also jumped, as has Robert Lambert, Matthias Nielsen and Jamin Lidsey are uh, all on their way into the stadium from above. <laughs> you can see Gleb Chuganoff and uh, Bartosz Schmarslik taking a look at the, uh, the proceedings and um, it's a rather unusual way to enter an event but uh, we'll be interested to see who exactly makes it down first and we've already sent Sam Malenko out onto the uh, the centre to hopefully catch a word with the riders as they make their way. The rest of the boys waiting on the uh, start line. Let's run through a couple of the other riders we have here tonight, including Patrick Dudek, a uh, recent Grand Prix winner in uh, Tetro, so certainly a man in form. And uh, whilst this is a testimonial meeting, there's several real star names here who will be keen to win it, keen to set down a marker. Ty is joined by his great friend and colleague here, Matt Sianowski, tonight as well. Teammates here for uh, nearly a decade as well. Janowski came back to Roslov in 2014. They've had so much success together, including last year's uh, league title. Francis Gus, the young Latvian. Here come the riders on their way down. Uh, it's uh, quite a sight. It's uh, impossible for us to tell at the moment exactly who's going to uh, going to make it down, but uh, there's plenty of down the first, I should say, with plenty of interest from the uh, from the riders on the ground. But uh, here we go. We'll be sending, uh, as I say, Sam out there to find out exactly what this experience feels like. Thankfully, we had um, possibility of thunderstorms earlier. A few heavy drops of rain came down a couple of hours ago, but that's all cleared away. So there was no problem with this uh, parachute jump uh, skydive taking place as the riders make their way in and uh, Bartosz Marzlik taking uh, a keen interest in proceedings along with Matt Sianowski. So here we go and uh, let's see who we can get uh, on the ground first here in Rossov to a tremendous ovation from the crowd here and Kleb actually filming it and there we go. <laughs> So the crowd are giving it a tremendous reception and uh, let's uh, see let's see who we can get in, wh in which order we can get onto the uh, and who can land on the uh, on the centre green but it is quite a sight so we don't tend to see this too often uh, at any kind of event let alone at a speedway meeting and uh, I wonder if some of those boys who are, are watching it now are <laughs> thinking that uh, maybe they should have had a go themselves we, we think it's we think it could be Ty Wolfenden coming in at the moment, um, but uh, your guess is as good as ours at this moment in time, but you'll see in a second. No, it's a single. It's a single. We're expecting uh, Ty to be on a double, but there we go. They're all coming in. Spectacular stuff. Robert Lambert on that list. Matthias Nielsen, Ty's teammate from uh, Esbjerg in Denmark. Chris Holder, the former world champion 2012. World champion, can it really be 10 years ago that Chris was world champion? It's uh, being given a great reception from the crowd as they make their way onto the centre green. And we will try and get some reaction to this very shortly. All about Ty Wuffington's 10 years with Roslav. Three world championships in that time and the league title success, the extra league title last year. There you see the uh, the Aussie Kevlar with Jamin Lindsay making his way. Sorry. Chris Holder on his way down. And uh, the next one just coming overhead, just seen it from over the uh, over the massive grandstand here, and we think we have Ty Wolfenden coming in next. We believe we have Ty Wolfenden coming in at the moment. He was, we were told he was going to be the, the first to jump, and here he comes. There is Ty Wolfenden making his way after another spectacular entry, and uh, that is uh, some way in. We will try and get some reaction. Let's go down to Sam with Ty. 
putting nets on that. How did it feel? Dude, amazing. Oh, I was shouting Krisha because she was walking in front. I was like, move! That was soft, nice and soft. Yeah, that's it. Chris came in with the so biggest smile on his face. Oh, dude, it's the best feeling in the world. Yeah. Nothing beats it. Anyway, <laughs> exciting times. Keep going, bud. Yeah, man, cheers. Bro. All right, we're done. Make their way down. Well done to everyone for organizing this um, the, the club have been superb all everyone's back in the meeting uh, fantastically well and uh, it's uh, you can see how much the the enjoyment uh, when probably when you hit the ground we've seen Chris Holder we've seen Jamin Lidsey and uh, Matthias Nielsen Robert Lambert Ty Wolfen and good sports and also uh, pretty brave as well to uh, do that how was that for you Oh, unbelievable. You got the biggest smile in your face oh. now. Awesome. You look a little dizzy, are you? I'll be right. Give me a few minutes. I'll be sweet. <laughs> Get it together, bud. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we got Robert Lambert right here. Turn around here, bud. Wow. We got Robert. What do you think, Robert? Look can't, at smile. Can't, can't get the smile off my face. That feeling jumping out. Oh. Couldn't breathe for a couple of seconds, but then, you know, once I'm looking down, oh, something special. I'll definitely go back up and do it again. Amazing. Keep it going. Good luck for the evening. <laughs> Thanks. And, pro and probably one of the ones here, I got Matthias, probably one of the ones that was the most frightened, I think, before you went out there. Yeah, it was definitely the wildest thing I ever done, man. That was so crazy. Yeah, I'm glad you came out of it okay. You told me earlier this is going to hurt. Yeah, and it went okay, yeah, so that's good. Good stuff. Way to go. Thank you. It's a good job that Sam didn't tell Jamin Lidsey and uh, Robert Lambert uh, that they were in heat one. They probably know that, to be fair, but uh, they have a bit of time to, uh, to collect themselves before the first race. Uh, but incredible scenes here in, in Roslav as the riders make their way in. It's been quite some opening celebration. As I say, a celebration of Ty's career, his time with Roslav, and three world titles along the way. The first of them came, can you believe it, nine years ago. He defeated Yarek Hampel by nine points. Let's relive the action from 2013.
incredible recollections and images from 2013. Poignant memories too, especially with the commentary of our friend Nigel Pearson, who was also very good friends with Ty as well. And Sam, that really sums it up, doesn't it? Uh, nine years that was, and <laughs> these are the, uh, the pre-meeting celebrations. But to watch that, that footage and also to hear Nigel and Kelvin, and we know what happened to so Sam Diogo this year, it really does bring it home. If that doesn't get the hair on the back of your neck, stand it up watching all that stuff, uh, that tie success in the Grand Prix and some excellent commentary work there for sure. Ty's out there on the on the track right now having a little bit of fun. I think that's what they call beer bonging. You, you get the old uh, uh, table tennis ball into the drink and you got to drown it. Yeah, what I think right now is they're, they're, they're throwing, this is a way they're eliminating cups, it looks like, by drinking them. And I think these guys right here must be the biggest drinkers in Brussels or something like that. Yeah, but look at the crowd. Everybody's participating in this and having a lot of fun. And uh, Ty's about having fun with everybody. So these guys right here, obviously, he knows them. There he goes. He's got it in there. Now he's got to drink it. This is watch. He's going to get it in there. No, you missed the, that the one. The competition here, Sam, is to win the helmet that's on the center there. The oh, win, winning one of Ty's okay, helmets. Yes, now, now how you win it, you, you, can, you can explain better than me. But um, <laughs> Okay. But anyway, it's, it's all about winning the, winning the helmet. Yep. Anyway, the track track is uh, being groomed as well. The riders behind us are all getting prepared. They're all doing their uh, uh, all their exercises that they do before they go racing. And here the boys are drinking the beers down out there in the center ground. I know where I want to be right now. It's great to see. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see the uh, the way this meeting has captured the imagination. I think we always we always thought it would because uh, uh, Ty's a rider that uh, the Rosler fans have taken to their heart, obviously with the the success. Then that success, obviously with Rosler. Uh, last year finally winning the extra league title but also ties three individual titles as well the second of which came seven years ago and that was really a dominant season he finished in the end 16 points clear of Greg Hancock let's look back on the memories of I got one of my favorite buddies right next to me, Mr. Greg Hancock. What's going on, man? It's been a long time, but uh, what a no better place than uh, than here to catch up again. You know, we see you. I see you a lot on a lot of blogs, and you're involved with this club, and you're involved with Ty Wolfenden, and you're here supporting him. Yeah, you know what? This is for me. This is it's an honor that Ty asked me to be here. He asked me to take a few laps at some point, and uh, you know, he's a great kid. I've known him for a lot of years. Was good friends with his dad and uh, the fact that I have a lot of years here from the past and now working with the club to work with Ty in this club too like it's kind of a win-win for me. We did talk a little bit about it me and you earlier when we met for the first time in weeks months maybe but you said that um, oh, we can hear Ty in the background I don't I don't want to 
overshadow that, but at the same time, you said that this is ticking a lot on his mind right now. Maybe racing isn't 100% at the moment. Thank you very much. Without a doubt. I mean, Ty's got a lot going on in his life, and uh, the thing is with Ty, you can never uh, really underestimate or you can think he's got so much going on. I think, how does he stay focused in the game? Maybe his results haven't been as consistent as they usually are, and I'm sure this plays a little bit of a, of a part of it, but if you say that to him, he's only going to prove you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, it's all about everybody enjoying his success over the years, and you've had tremendous success to do, but it's all about Ty. Really great to see you here, Greg, and um, I can't wait to see you on the bike. Actually, I can't, I can't wait myself. This is exciting. I, I took a few laps again yesterday, and uh, again, we're here for Ty, but um, I got a little bit of pre-race jitters. Anyway, good luck and have fun. Cheers, bro. We are going to see Greg Hancock on the circuit during the uh, meeting tonight. Not racing, but certainly be putting in some laps as Ty Wolfenden, who's just been speaking to the crowd on parade, is now up amongst the crowd before the start, official start of the meeting, which is in around, in around uh, 10 minutes' time. And there's the banner, and that sums up really the feelings of the crowd towards Wolfenden. Many riders in the past, you became a one of us. That really sums things up, and you see Greg Hancock there speaking to Sam with four world championships in a glittering career. Ty Wolfenden with three. We've got Bartosz Marzik racing here tonight, already on two, and quite potentially this year as well. Uh, not to mention uh, Chris Holder, former world champion as well. And you just see the uh, the greatness that really does exist uh, in this stadium here, Speedway from the last decade certainly in terms of uh, world title wins and Greg Hancock of course goes right back to 1997 in terms of uh, Grand Prix success amazing to think 25 years since Greg Hancock was crowned world champion for the very first time crowd making their way in I have to say they've actually been here since around four o'clock this afternoon because there's been all sorts going on uh, in the vicinity in the stadium grounds a fantastic facility here at the Olympic Stadium and they've had all sorts of pre-meeting entertainment going on. It's really kept everyone entertained. They opened the gates about uh, 45 minutes before ago, and they've been uh, really uh, pouring their way in ever since then. And they're going to see, no doubt, a fully competitive 16 rider, 20 heat individual meeting, building up to a big final for the top four scorers. And we're certainly all looking forward to, uh, to that one as the evening goes on. But uh, at the moment, it's all about the crowd. Uh, really acclaiming Ty Wolfenden on his walk in. Let's join Sam. Go down to the business side of things. What an introduction to your 10 years ever. Yeah, it's uh, it's always a big one here in Poland, you know. I've got fans all over the world that appreciate what I do for the sport and uh, how hard we work. So it's a pleasure to be here and put on a show. And to be honest, I'm pretty stoked to the crowd, man. I didn't expect that many people. Wow. I know they're all here for you, and so am I, Ty. And everybody in this pits right now, they want to see you go out there and do some laps. And these guys are all willing to battle it for you. I want everybody successful and yourself. Keep it up bright. Thanks, man. Chat to you soon. Yep. It's uh, now time to get the uh, the race head on and uh, because uh, he'll be keen to uh, to do well. Let's uh, look back now on Ty's third world title, which came uh, four years ago. A massive scrap that was with uh, Bartosz Marzik. Ty actually won four Grand Prix uh, that year, including the last two. Real drama. Here's the action from 2018. Wolfie! 
that was some run down to the finale four years ago because Bartosz Marzik was really coming on strong at the end and Wolfenden dug, dug deep and won the last two rounds to become champion for the third time. And Sam, I mean, I'm sure the determination is still there. Everything's still burned within to get that fourth world title and try and now knock Marzik effectively off the perch that he's established this year. Absolutely. Uh, Ty is a true uh, racer champion and the fans here are just all over this place right now and they're all itching to see some good racing in the pre-show. Everybody's been doing fine. You can see the kids. He's, he's put a lot into the kids. He's has face painting. He's had the music going on. There's been some, some monster energy trucks out there making some noise, doing some burnouts. You get inside the tent um, and your eyes are just amazed on the visuals that are going on out there and, and the crowds are just enjoying themselves. You've done it, Sam. You've organized testimonials and farewells and so on. Um, it must be um, a really stressful occasion and to put on such an event like this with all, all the different things that are going on here um, basically one man's behind it all that's uh, pretty uh, a pretty hard work when you've also got to concentrate on your own racing absolutely you know it's been on his mind um, all this build up right here that to get this date in the calendar of the FIM he's had to plan this way in advance and all he wants to do right now and all he seems to be doing is just pleasing everybody that's been supporting him for his years of racing and um, there's nothing nothing better than him giving stuff back to the riders he's giving you know I asked the riders what are they racing for today all of them said we're just here for Ty I believe there might be some uh, some prize money on it but right now he's giving out some of his Oakley products it looks like that he's sponsored by and I'm sure they're gonna have plenty of uh, giveaways that Ty will be sharing with um, all the riders just to give them the gratitude of being a part of his big day because you look at this lineup today and um, there is real rivalry between some of those riders involved but when it comes to turning out for, for a night like this they do it, and uh, doubtless they'll be very keen to put on a big show. You know, everybody would want to be on the coattail of somebody that's successful, and Ty Wolfinger right now is, uh, you know, he's been he's been right at the top of his game for a long time. He might have a little bit of dip at the moment, but you can't blame that right now, considering what he's put together here that we're witnessing. Um, you know, everybody wants to be a part of Ty. Um, his success rolls on, and uh, this is just another another attitude to the guy to keep going. Look at the fans out there, and the, and the riders are all participating in pleasing them when they had the fan walk here earlier there was a bunch of people that got in on a special invitation of ties yeah the pits were absolutely jammed as you can see about uh, maybe an hour or so ago before they warmed the bikes up and uh, again the the interest in the meeting people getting involved on all sorts of levels um, really incredible and uh, not something you see from every testimonial event so it just shows again uh, that the level of the man that we're dealing with here yeah and and the other thing was the special the special side of things was he's always got a surprise I don't know what his next surprise will be this evening but I'm sure he's got something going on the riders are now just getting focused on getting out there on this nice groomed racetrack um, and um, we're, we're gonna see some great racing I'm sure yeah I'm sure we are we've seen some some great racing here down the years it's staged all sorts of big events including world finals back in the day and uh, we we should point out that uh, you've raced here in the world final some <laughs> uh, you cornered me right behind me in that pit right there I was in there in 1992 when Gary Havelock won this uh, world championship individual event here and uh, and uh, yeah yeah it's right there right behind me it haunted me when I came in here that little pit spot there I think I told you when we got off the we got off the plane and got in the taxi to come to this event you know this place was it's a beautiful racetrack it's hard to win every gate position out there and I had gate three and uh, the referee was very stern nobody had any any chance of uh, relaxing on the two-minute warning two-minute warning came in on my third on my first race which was heat three and the clouds opened up and the rain came in surely they're gonna stop this mr. referee nope we went out there and um, everything just went downhill but I still enjoyed success around this racetrack beautiful track and you had to wait one more year to finally lift that uh, that world championship so it yeah, you finally you got it done but uh, Ty, of course, has done it three times. You've just spoken to Greg, who's done it four. Really, really spectacular achievements. And some of these boys here tonight are riders who will want to do that in the future. That's the, that's the great thing. Absolutely. I mean, Dan Bewley, we had a word with him earlier. You know, a GB rider. He's uh, keen to uh, learn everything he possibly can to. He's associated with here at Wrocław's track along with Ty Wiffenden. And all they want to do is just... Uh, you know, succeed, and if they can just work their way around these uh, tracks, 
week in, week out. Hopefully they'll find that perfect recipe, give them the best chance to go out there and compete for the big gold medal. We're going to see Robert Lambert um, in Heat 1 in Yellow Dambuli later on. And from a Great Britain perspective, it's fantastic to see those two boys, the way they have adapted to the Grand Prix in the last couple of years, and putting themselves really in that in that mix for, for top six and making semi-finals and finals. You know, it's a combination of a lot of things. You, you can be talent. Uh, have that talent to go out there and be able to do it, but you got to have that team around you, which we see a lot and hear a lot of the top riders always saying the setup's important and that team building that you've got to build in your young career to be able to establish yourself. Whenever uh, a mechanic or uh, a team building starts to go, these guys are sincerely behind their riders, so those riders got to give them the results, and that's how the team reflects on the big benefits of winning races when both sides are working in harmony. Yeah, we'll see how those uh, teams uh, build up over the uh, months and no doubt years to come. But let's uh, concentrate now on the Ty Wuffenden testimonial meeting, a 20 heat individual event, and it builds up to a four-man final. Top four scorers into the final. And uh, Sam, we're going to send you out and about also as the evening goes on. You're going to be grabbing instant reaction from the boys as and when we see some good action, and I'm sure we'll see plenty of that. So heat number one. And uh, there have been, as I say, a couple of changes to the lineup. And in fact, the two riders who have come in are in this heat number one because I mentioned no Anders Thompson and no Mikhail Mickelson after a crash in Voyens last night. So Mikhail uh, Tech, uh, he has come in at number one and Jonas Jefferson at number three. But there is uh, Jamin Lipsy who goes in blue off uh, gate number two. There is uh, Jonas Jefferson in the white and colour, the Chester Hover rider. And off the inside, Tech, who uh, is the... Is a Roslav rider who has replaced Anders Thompson in the lineup. Robert Lambert goes off the outside. Jefferson has uh, done pretty well with the Chester Hover in the last couple of years in the extra Liga. Litzy, of course, a uh, former under-21 world champion uh, a couple of years ago when it, uh, when it was a one-off event due to the pandemic. So very much a man looking for a big future. Sozitek goes in red off the inside. Litzy in blue off gate two. Jefferson white off gate three. And Lambert yellow off the outside. Yeah, Lambert would love to be able to make a shoot and start from that outside gate. And um, he's all pumped up and he's excited after that uh, that big glide into the stadium uh, on the back on a parachute there. So he's uh, he's pumped up. Let's see what his adrenaline flow looks like coming from that outside gate. Yeah, we have two of our uh, skydivers uh, in action in this very first race. Ty Wolf the testimonial meeting there. The green light is on for the referee. And we get underway. And it's a good start there from the inside by Cersei Tech. Lambert tries to come across in yellow from the outside. And then neck and neck off the second bend. And Robert Lambert here has the advantage over Cersei Tech with Jamin Lindsay in third place. Jefferson out the back. Good job there by Robert Lambert from the outside, making it through. But uh, Cersei Tech having a real go as well in second place. And now let's see if Jamin Lindsay can come through as well. Yeah, the track looks really good for the guys. Robert Lambert made it. He had to work hard, really, from that outside gate to get himself out in front there. So, uh, so it did come all his way there, but you could just see Lizzie coming up the inside there. If he could just sneak um, Crusoe's off that one, it'd be really good for him. That's where the strap is here for a second place with uh, Jamin Lindsay trying to work his way through. Lambert has checked off and gone out in front on a high at the moment. Robert Lambert up making the Whoa, final in Tetra in the last Grand Prix, but really stacking up here for second, third, and fourth with Cersei Tech over Lindsay. Lindsay still challenging hard, but Jefferson trying to make his way through on the inside. It's Lambert away, away. Miles Peer out in front. Lambert will win it. And off the final bend they come with Cersei Tech in second place. And Jefferson will snatch third there from Jamin Lidsey on the line. Well, Jamin Lidsey has spent uh, three and three quarter laps trying to make his way through, but uh, then he got done off the final turn by Jonas Jeppesen, who takes the third place point, but no doubt at all about the race winner. Robert Lambert, very impressive indeed there. Didn't quite make it from the outside gate, but did enough to put himself in play with Thursday Tech. Made it round the outside off the second bend. Lambert is a man in form at the moment. He's piling up the points in Poland and Sweden as well. Doing well in the Grand Prix series and that's a clear indication of the form that Robert Lambert is in. Fine ride there in heat one Sam. Well if they're having fun and winning races what a combination. Robert Lambert sneaks one from the outside 
and uh, made a good start. He didn't get it uh, perfectly done all the way through the first corner, but he did build up speed down the back straightaway and uh, sealed the deal going into turn three. So that was race one result. Really good for the GB rider. Robert Lambert off to a winning start with Mikhail Sersi Tank getting a decent second place. Some good defensive riding from him. He gets two points. Eunice Jeppesen coming through for third with one. And Jamin Lidsey failing to score. There's confirmation of that opening race result. Lambert the winner. Sersi Tank second. Jeppesen third. Lidsey out the back. A reminder, top four to tonight's final where the, uh, the big prizes are won and look at the crowd here at the Olympic Stadium pretty much packed the main grandstand out and that holds several thousand people as well so uh, really have to come out in force and they're about to see Ty Wolf and the riding in red in heat number two and a current uh, GB winner with uh, Patrick Dudek on coming out of gate number three in this one and uh, Jeb Shinovka coming off of uh, the second one but um, on the outside we have a very very good hungry guy that says he's here to celebrate Ty Wolf uh, 10 years here at Wrocław and that is Bartosz Schmeiser coming from that outside gate and that guy is in really good form right now Ty's going to have to work extremely hard hopefully he's focused to get out of that inside gate to get into the corner and uh, mix it up. Well, Marzak, like I'm sure, is keen to come here and win. And um, Dudek, who's just recently won a Grand Prix, that was really impressive. Wolfenden as well on the inside. Glenn Chuganoff, his uh, Rosnav teammate. Heat number two with Auto Max sponsoring. Our thanks to uh, GM Engine for heat number one. Wolfing it off the inside, chugging off gate two, two that gate three, and Smarslick off the outside, the World Championship leader there, the testimonial man in red, Wolfenden, and a big race here in heat two, with some top stars in action, away they go, and Wolfenden off the inside, lifts going into the band, and Smarslick comes, charging across in yellow, and Bartosz Smarslick has the advantage here over Wolfenden, Dudek trying to make his move around the outside in white, chugging off is out the back, so Wolfenden rides mid-track to see off Dudek, and there goes chugging off down the inside, and chugging off has passed Dudek for a third place there. So Patrick Dudek was trying to challenge Wolfenden, but in fact he got passed by Chuganoff. Yeah, Smashek made a super start from that outside there, and uh, Wolfenden had to work hard just to get into that second place. So he's, uh, he's doing pretty good out there. I don't know if these uh, nerves are, are, are settled down yet for his big grand entrance into the stadium, but at least he's uh, grabbing a couple points. Dudek was right there trying to... Uh, to do some damage there, but lost that third place right there with uh, off there. So there's still some work to do on this racetrack. Yep, Dudek looking to swing it wide on the first two turns. Now we we'll try and cut back up the inside of Ben 2 to try and get a third place point. But it's all about Martos Marzik out in front. The double world champion trying to reclaim that crown this season. Marzik is the winner. Second place is Ty Wuffenden. And third place is Chuganoff over Dudek. And that was uh, pretty fast and impressive from Smarslik off the outside gate. Wolfenden made quite a decent jump from the inside, but then just seemed to lift as they went into the first bend. And Smarslik came storming around the outside. And as Wolfenden fended off Dudek, it was the home man, Gleb Chuganov, who came through and took third place there from Dudek. So confirmation of heat number two, Smarslik the race winner, uh, Wolfenden second, and Chuganov third. Yeah, just normal business, I would say, from Bartosz Szymanski coming from uh, that great uh, gate number four with the yellow helmet color. He definitely made a good start, went through the first corner. We can just see here the bike lifts right there. Ty's trying to get in there, but just upset himself a little bit coming in the curb. Did Ty with the front wheel just hitting the inside of the white line there, which is actually a curb, which unsettled his bike right there. There was a chance there for uh, Patrick Dudek to get in the action early on in the first lap there, but just overshot the corner a little bit and left the hole in there and, and then had to settle for last place. But Smazek does the business from gate number four and uh, we'll have to see who else can uh, match that as the meeting goes on. Yeah, there's confirmation of how things stand so far with Lambert and Smazek are two race winners. Sergi Tech and Wuffington with two points from that opening line. We'll move on to heat number three. Reminder, it's a normal 20 heat format here. They'll all race five times and then the uh, top four scorers will race off at the end for the overall meeting victory and you saw Smarzik debriefing with his pit crew I can tell you there are plenty of riders watching our images in our studio here in the pits they're keeping a check on proceedings when it gets to competition time Sam the game face is on and everyone wants to win everybody wants to have a sneak preview of the track but before they get out there and what better way to come over the top of our shoulders and watch it on the
the monitor here. We are being surrounded but, by the uh, monitor for heat four here. Three. Three. Yeah. <laughs> so heat number three is up the start line, and uh, Matthias Nielsen, teammate of uh, Wolfingen at uh, Edgeburg in uh, Denmark, rides off the inside in red. It's Chris Holder going in blue there off gate number two. Uh, there is Nielsen, there is Chris Holder. Matt Sianowski, long time teammate of Time Wolfingen, goes in white, and fast Freddie Lindgren in yellow off the outside. Mm, is that going to be the favorite gate uh, in this first round of race? And we'll have to see with Freddie sitting on it. But Matty Janowski rides here week in and week out, coming from gate number three. Chris Holder in really, really good form. And uh, Matthias Nielsen on the inside gate. And hopefully if he makes a straight line in the first corner, he might be right with these other three guys on the right side of him. Yeah, big night here for Matthias Nielsen racing against some, uh, some real big names. And Chris Holder, former world champion Janowski, world car star, Lindgren, former world final podium finisher, Grand Prix podium. Away they go with heat number three. And a bit of bumping and barging as uh, Chris Holder in blue gets to the bend in front. But Janowski is trying to go wide and coming through on the inside in yellow is Freddie Lindgren. Lindgren will try and move down the inside of Janowski, but Janowski has got the second place. You keep it rolling around the outside there. Holder has the advantage and just closing off there. Matt Janowski is trying hard. And now looking to come back, but if he does so, Lindgren could come in, and Janowski back through in the second place. Wow, what a tough first lap of racing right there, with Holder making the start, but you then Magic Janowski really winding it up, and now he's finally trying to get underneath Holder going into this corner, but can't do that. As you said, Freddie's sneaking up on the inside now in this corner here, but Magic looks like he really wants to pass Chris Holder here. Chris has got to defend the whole way around. He doesn't know if he should go to the outside or to the inside. He's got to think both ways, because he's right up the inside of him. Well, Chris Holder knows where to ride here, did guest here for uh, virtually an entire season a couple of years ago and having quite a good campaign with Ostrov, he's doing all he can to hold back Matt Sianowski on the final turn, Janowski is trying to go wide, it won't work out as Chris Holder wins heat three from Matt Sianowski with Freddie Lindgren in third place, good battling here in Roslav and Holder having to ride with eyes there, very much in the back of his head to fend off Janowski, a, a, a handshake between them after the race, uh, plenty of respect between those two boys as uh, Holder takes the victory in heat number three. Really impressive ride. You're under colossal pressure throughout that race, and Holder does hold off Janowski with Freddie Lindgren always in the equation there in third spot. Confirmation of the result then of heat number three. Holder, the winner, Janowski in second place. Lindgren was third. As they revved, this, uh, revved it up on the start line in this heat number three, Chris Holder coming from gate two with the number 23 on his back, just gets over the top of the guy on the inside, and now he's got to battle real hard in the first corner, and as he feels, I'm sure he felt Janowski coming up on the outside of him, but after that, Janowski was all over him, and uh, my buddy Chris Holder that's sitting right next to him, right next to me, looking at this monitor right here, he was on top of it here. I don't know if this uh, microphone works, Mr. but we're going to maybe shove it up there and see what you think. Yeah, you had to defend pretty hard anyway. anyway. I heard where he was and um, maybe if it wasn't a testimonial, he probably would have sent me for a hot dog, but <laughs> I'll take that one anyway. I, I think, think the, the hot, hot dog, dog might have been free, free for the riders. riders. <laughs> <laughs> Super stuff, eh? The, uh, the boys watching the action and uh, great stuff there in heat number three. Our thanks to Bio Oil for their sponsorship of uh, that one. And a good battle between uh, Chris Holder and uh, Matze Janowski. And that puts Chris Holder up the leaderboard along with uh, Robert Lambert and Bartosz Marzik. We've got four riders to come who've uh, not yet uh, competed. And they'll be in action in heat number four. They made their way onto the track. Heat four with thanks to uh, Opal and their sponsorship. And uh, Martin Bashlik, uh, recent GP winner in Prague. What a night that was for him. Uh, here is uh, Bartek Kowalski, the uh, youngster, another one of the uh, Roslav uh, youngsters, trying to make his way uh, in the sport and uh, making a pretty good job of it uh, as well. Be interesting to see how he uh, performs. Actually, started his career with Chester Hover, joined uh, Roslav in current campaign. Bashlik goes in blue. Francis Gus, the young Latvian, has got a massive future as well. Roslav Ryder coming on line with Poznan. He rides in white. And Dan Dealy off the outside goes in yellow. Good race in prospect. Well, and, young I think this is a pretty competitive race between all four of them, so it's going to be a really interesting first corner. Kowalski inside. Bashlik gate two. Gus gate three. Kuli off the outside. They fly away. And Dan Dealy certainly flies away there from gate four. He swings across and gets to the, almost the inside. Then he lifts coming off the bend. And that will allow Kowalski to come through on the inside and they'll be close there into Ben 
away and Bewley chops him off and Bewley has the advantage over Kowalski with a flash lick in third and Francis Gust is at the back Gust is trying to hold the inside run Vasilik in blue looking to make it round the outside there of Kowalski but uh, it's uh, Bewley way out in front straight over the back of me right here Greg Hancock just reached over and told me and that's what said dance the bands he's out there showing his colors from the outside guy a little bit tough in the first corner when he lifted but he's checked out now but they are really strapping away for second third and fourth and Martin Vasilik has gone round the outside into a second place he's got Kowalski and Francis Gust is trying to barge his way through as well and they were tight there off the uh, fourth bend as uh, Kowalski maintains that uh, third place for now Bewley has checked out and clear really impressive stuff from Dan Bewley in heat four Vasilik had to come to the traffic and did so in the second place but it's uh, Dan Bewley to the cheers of the home fans here in Roslav who wins heat number four Bewley Dan is the man in heat four and he takes Takes victory with Vashlik uh, working hard for, for second place and Kowalski the youngster in third with uh, Francis Goose missing out and plenty of uh, effort from him as well but there he goes Dan Bewley the winner of heat four so we talked about the the Great Britain young guns Dan Bewley a race winner Robert Lambert a race winner in their first two rides here in their first ride of peace here in Ty Wolfington's testimonial meeting Dan making his way back to the pits here's the action from heat four well greg hancock did give me a little bit of briefing what he's been doing for the club and he says i've set these riders on their bike and said look i can make little adjustments for you and i can help you sometimes dan buley is one of those candidates that will learn off of greg hancock and right there dan made that slight mistake but he definitely got that bike in front off that outside gate to get him out there and get going as the race continues you know fashlik is trying to get in there to sneak in for that second place he finally does it and gets one over Kowalski there to, to settle in for that second place. But it was all about Dan Bewley. He made it from the start, made a little bit of a mistake in the first corner, and the bike reared, but after that, he took control of the four laps. We're seeing so much good stuff from Dan Bewley uh, in the last couple of years, really, but certainly as far as the Grand Prix is concerned, uh, made the last two semi-finals and was superb in difficult conditions in Tetro. So Bewley the winner of heat four, Vashlik was second, Kowalski was third, and Francis Ghost was at the back. They've all had one ride. The tractors are on, the girls are on to apply the uh, interval entertainment, the mini interval and Robert Lambert, Bartosz Ravlik, Chris Holder and Dan Bewley are our opening four race winners with Mikhail Serzitek, uh, Ty Wolfenden, Matt Sajanowski and Martin Vashlik on two points so far, Jeppesen, Chugganoff, Lindgren and Kowalski on one and uh, then yet to score Lindsay Dudek, uh, Nielsen and Gust. So uh, plenty of uh, entertainment in the early stages here. Let's get some early reaction with Sam. Gregory, I just pulling you up here. Am I tempting that you tempted to get on the bike? What's that? Are you trying to get on that bike in a minute? On Magic's bike, yes. Are I want to get on Magic's bike. Is that going to happen like now? Uh, I don't know. I'm waiting for them to give me the green light. All right. And there's, you... there's a chance it could happen now. So maybe I'll be able to follow you out on the racetrack and watch you go out there and do a big. Are you do a big start? I have an extra suit if you want to ride. Are you, sorry about that. I forgot to talk into the microphones. Even though you heard me. Are you going to ride his bike and do a start or do four laps or what are you going to do? We have to wait and see. Okay. Is there another surprise? There's no surprises, it's just you have to wait and see. When was the last time you were on a bike, Greg? Uh, I, you know, I ride off and on quite a bit, but um, now I rode practice yesterday a little bit, and the last time was back in February, so... Have some... Have, have four safe laps. You got it. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right. Greg Hancock, one of the true legends of Speedway, four-time world champion, and we mentioned the, and the longevity and the distance between those world titles, really fantastic stuff, and uh, we are looking forward to seeing Greg on track, because uh, it was so unfortunate that his career uh, ended uh, as it did for, for personal circumstances, and um, I think he could have gone on and won Grand Prix, and possibly even more world championships, he kept himself in such good shape, he went on that long run of uh, never actually missing a Grand Prix for years and years and years, and uh, obviously still has a big part to play uh, in the development of the riders for the future, uh, both within the Roslar Club and also with Matze Janowski as well. So let's head down to Sam now. He's with Chris Holder. Chris, gate two. You had to work hard to get in front of him, but for the four laps, you had a tiger on your back. Oh, man, I could hear him everywhere, and I was like, he's probably the quickest guy here, isn't he? So I was just going everywhere, and I could sort of try to second guess him a little bit, and um, yeah, I managed to get the win, so that's cool, but maybe I need to jump out of a plane before the meeting more often, I don't know, but it worked out all right, didn't it? It was good. How was that? 
Man, that was scary. I've done it a couple of times, but it never gets any easier. And uh, it was good. A good bunch of boys, first time for a few of them, and it was uh, something different for sure. So just tell us real quick. So you guys had to get in a plane. How long did it take you to get up before you jumped out? Probably 20 minutes, I reckon. And this, if you've seen the plane, you'd know why we had parachutes on, because it didn't look the best. But yeah, we took 20 minutes, got up there. Wolfie died first, and I was second. And then obviously the other boys come down. But yeah, it's uh, if you haven't done it, and you've got a death wish, go for it. And one more question, how long were you up there? Not long, man. Not very long at all. I don't know. I think we free fell for maybe like 30 seconds or something. And, um, man, the, we went through a couple of clouds and the water or whatever hit in the face fell like needles. But once he pulled the chute, plain sailing. Are you having fun? Loving it, mate. Loving it. Let's go. Yes, I'm yet to understand how Ty Wolfenden jumped first and ended up on the uh, on the centre green last, uh, but I'm not uh, planning to actually try and work out for myself too hard uh, how that happened. Uh, Chris Holder, very much a, a class act still in the sport and a world champion 10 years ago, as we mentioned, five Grand Prix wins in his career. Big highlight when he went at Melbourne, don't forget that night uh, back in 2016. So uh, Chris is really a man who uh, can still get it together on the big night and I'm sure we'll have aspirations of getting back in the Grand Prix as well one day in the future. That combination of Chris Holder and Darcy Ward uh, years ago uh, was also a really spectacular one, and uh, such a shame we couldn't see more of that uh, in the uh, in the future seasons. Track work is taking place here at the Olympic Stadium as we get set for the second round of races. We'll be seeing uh, a bit of a Roslav uh, battle in heat number five because we're going to see uh, Dan Bewley, Ty Wolfenden and Matt Sianowski all on track in heat five along with uh, Mikhail Sozitek as well. So the home fans will have uh, someone to cheer winning that race, no doubt about that one. And uh, there'll be a lot too. We want to see Woofie win tonight's meeting and uh, really celebrate in, in such a fashion. And uh, has been certainly quite some occasion so far. And let's hear from one of the very top men in the sport, double champion Bartosz Marzik is with Sam. Bartosz, great start from gate number four. Yes, I feel very good for the, the first racing and uh, we'll see what happens in the future, but for this moment, so very good. <laughs> you look extremely fast. I don't know if you're the one yet or not, but Magic looked fast behind Chris Holder in his race, but Chris held him back. If you make the start or not make the start, how hard would it be to pass here? I think so. so the now is more racing and I think so more lines also for the fighting. And tracks are also so funny for the racing. Maybe not so the fierce for uh, racing because you know the little bit material go go out. And yes, we'll see. <laughs> anyway, you got a good start. Keep it going. Thank you. <laughs> Bartosz Marzik certainly a rider you would pay to watch. Uh, gives it 110 percent every time he's on the bike. Gets involved in some incredible racing manoeuvres. But uh, more often than not, they come out right as well. And uh, he's already provided many, many highlights in uh, Korea that uh, could and should go on for many more years as well beyond that. Uh, the track uh, grading and preparation is just being completed. As I look over my uh, left shoulder, I can see Greg Hancock uh, with machine uh, and with helmet on. And we are going to see uh, Greg on the circuit very shortly, which I'm sure is something that the uh, Roslar fans will be uh, very much looking forward to as well. He's got uh, Matt Sajanowski with him at the moment and uh, also uh, Gleb Choganoff taking a look at uh, what's going on. Uh, lots of interest in seeing Greg Hancock uh, on track. Uh, here's some footage from earlier in the plane. Sam, don't you wish you were there? Okay, so we've seen that, uh, well, we heard from Chris Holder saying that. It took him about 20 minutes to get up there, so this is how they were packed in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to see a lot of this throughout the way the evening is going to be going on, I'm sure. But uh, look at Chris Holder packed up right there, third in there, Ty right out front. Just getting a sneak out, got somebody behind him. Look, Ty, that's us, hello. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. Um, <laughs> yes, it takes some nerve to do that. And <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, Greg Hancock is about to make his way onto the circuit for the first of his uh, demo laps. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what he can do. He certainly looks in good shape, Sam. No doubt yeah, about that. No, I think, I think he's, he's pretty fit right now, but he's also not a silly boy. He'll go out there and he'll feel it and he'll do a little start. He didn't want to tell us what he's going to do. He's not the kind of guy, I think, to go out there and really throw it around and show everybody what he's doing. He just like to conservatively win and go fast. So let's see, let's see what he does. I mean, everybody's going to be watching him. There's Chris Holder looking over and Robert Lambert looking over the fence. Anticipation. 
Because the amazing thing is that um, Drake's career transcended so many different eras. Here's a bit more from the uh, from the plane uh, with uh, Wolfram. And just confirmation there. There's the green light. <laughs> green, green light, I think, means go. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the door's open. You can uh, you can make your way out. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll uh, as I say, we will see that uh, bits from that uh, throughout throughout the evening. But yeah, I was saying about about Greg Hancock. He makes it around to the track. Initially, he was in that battle. He could still do a wheelie. But my my oh, word! Straight up, brother. That's him. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so he was battling with the likes of Tony Ricardson back in the day. He went through the the Nicky Pedersen era, Jason Crump, and so on. But then he was still scrapping away with the people that we're seeing now, the the Wuffendons and the Chris Holders, and even Bartosz Marzek. It's so many different eras. Absolutely. He was even in my world final back in 1993. Was he really? So there you go. I mean, he was. Uh, he was cutting his teeth back then. He's been a racer, a junior, a junior champion in America. He's had plenty of time on a bike. I can't believe he's still doing it. And look how smooth and fast he's going now on that track. It's uh, the sort of style that we saw for so many years in Grand Prix racing, and the home fans enjoyed it as well. And uh, Greg, I guess you say once you've, uh, you never lose it once you've, once you've had it. And uh, really good to see. And the boys are looking down on Greg. No, they're up there. Look at Ty. <laughs> there is confirmation that Ty Wolfram had left the plane first. <laughs> he took the scenic route, obviously. Yeah, they're free falling, I believe, right now. Look at that. That is amazing. Incredible pictures. Yeah. And he's got his own camera in his hand. Look at that. He's talking to himself. Look at that smile. At least he can raise a smile whilst he's doing it. That's, yeah. that's quite impressive. <laughs> he loves it. He loves it. It's Adrenaline junkie by, for, by far, man. So, so you know, I saw you uh, bungee jump at Rick Newell's testimony in 1992. I guess that's the nearest you've got. You know, I, I jumped off of a, a, a bridge one time at 80, 80 feet near into into water, and uh, I got Mr. Ty Wolfner there. We just seen you in there. Hey, 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 Ty. Oh, too late. Yeah, it's too late. He just ran. He just ran. Putting his helmet on, he just ran. I he's in heat. He's him. in heat. Five to be fair, Sam. Yeah, <laughs> there he is. Okay, I can't get him right now. But <laughs> well, there he goes. We could have seen him. Look at this right here. Boy. Yeah, I did jump off of a, a bridge one time, and I was as foolish for doing that. And I jumped into the water 80 foot high, and that was high. And then at Rick's testimonial, I kind of wasn't on the cards to go up and do the bungee jump. But you were persuaded? No, it was. Uh, they just said one more person, and somebody says, are you getting up? I stood up, and I said, I guess I am. And I jumped up there, <laughs> and it took me a, a couple of goes to jump. They said, right, we're going to count down two, three, go. And they went two, three, and I went, wait, wait, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready, and then I had to think about it for a second, and then I jumped. I tell you what, it was it exhilarating. Doing what these boys just did coming out of a plane is something that I, I wouldn't shy away from doing, um, but over the years I haven't had the best of uh, legs, and I don't know how I would do landing. The landing is a problem, not the jumping out. I would think for me, maybe. Okay. You know, but when I went out there and threw the microphone into Ty's uh, face and said, how was that? You know, smooth as heck. And I looked when he landed, the water came off the grass because there's a lot of water on it, and it just was a super soft landing when he skidded. It was almost like you were coming in for a home run in American baseball, coming in for that big skid right to the plate. Well, there's still time, Sam, you know. Yeah. Time to go. <laughs> you know, I'd do it. I've had my I've had reconstruction on my leg now. I'd do that. So, I mean, maybe next time we do something like this, uh, maybe in the 20-year celebration, I'll jump out. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Lovely pictures here of Greg taking the applause of the crowd, who quite naturally love him and uh, love to see him back on a bike as well and um, I guess he doesn't want to actually leave the circuit but um, <laughs> <laughs> those are the kind of scenes you see at the end of Grand Prix when you when you, well, when you win big heat 15s or old Grand Prix the celebrations over the fence and um, Greg enjoying the moment and quite rightly yeah, so absolutely. yeah Greg loves riding his motorbike there's no doubt about it and uh, for him to go out there and uh, and give his uh, support to Ty Wolfenden no better place than to do it here in Fratswap in front of uh, Ty's fans and with uh, Greg Hank Cox connection now with the club. Indeed, and I'm sure he's got plenty of work to do as they uh, try and uh, move themselves back into contention for the extra league. The, the playoffs, of course, feature the top six this year, so nothing is lost with the frantic pace that Lublin are setting after the good and the dramatic draw, of course, last week when Lublin snatched a 5 1 here in Heat 15. And that probably didn't go, too, go down too well with the, the home fans, but there's plenty of time to go in the extra league. And uh, some of these boys, or all of these boys in Heat number five, are very much involved in that, including Ty Wolfenden, the rider in white, coming up here. Absolutely, yeah. Just walking, watching with Greg came in uh, and flicked his bike up on the side stand there to be able to get the chain lube. There's uh, Luke Becker in his corner right now. Luke told me he set his clutches up for him, but then again, I know that's a lie because that was Magic Janowski's bike from what I was told. But anyway, Luke Becker's now got a flat here, not too far away from here in uh, Vratswav. 
And uh, this is where he's going to try and station himself as much as he possibly can do. And um, maybe he can learn off of some of Greg's, um, you know, expertise while he's hanging around here as well. Yeah, a bit of a uh, Wolverhampton connection here tonight, and not just because of you, Sam, but also with Luke Becker. And Pete Adams, of course, long-time helper and um, mentor for Time Wolf, who's been in his corner for those World Championships. He's here as well tonight. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. That's just the connections there, isn't it? So Luke Becker's uh, getting some uh, viewing of all these top riders and a relaxed mode in the pits. I had a nice chat with him earlier on, so he's absorbing everything he possibly can do. But uh, the big boys are ready to go out now for uh, heat number five. When I say the big boys, obviously, we know that uh, Ty Wolfenden's in it. And yep, Dan Bewley and, uh, and as well. Dan Bewley, yeah. So this is a good one. What the slight delay is, I don't know exactly, but um, they're still having fun. Very much so, and uh, hopefully we'll see them on track uh, very shortly because... Um, yeah, Greg has, uh, Greg's uh, cleared the track, so um, we're just waiting the confirmation from the referee that uh, we are good to go with Heat 5. few spots of rain beginning to come down. There wasn't anything drastic forecast for the evening. The real the threat of uh, thunderstorms was earlier in the day. So, uh, but in fact, we had a few heavy spots and not too much more than that. But um, there is uh, some uh, talk being... Uh, we're, we're hearing that there's, there's too many photographers on the centre green. Uh, and... Uh, and oh, therefore, did he pick the bad number? Now he's got to go. And Who therefore, knows? we can't have. Oh, no, uh, man, there are, there are well, of course, strict yeah, regulations where they're only allowed four photographers on the centre green at any see, one time. And uh, therefore, uh, that, that gentleman will have to come official, back later. Pretty official. And I did say to our uh, the guy that directs me and you, I can't. I got to keep my badge on, don't I? Because if I walk to go to the loo, I don't think I can get back here. Well, we certainly hope you would. But, uh, <laughs> That's how official but they are. Only four photographers in the centre green. Please. Well, there you go. There's something else we've learned tonight. And uh, that's probably something that Dan Dooley has learned there as he uh, checks with, with Ty Wolfenden as they make their way to the start line. And let's say, as we see them both on track, Ty Wolfenden's done a fantastic job mentoring Dan Dooley into this Roslav team, into being a genuine extra league performer. Dooley now wins meetings for Roslav and seeing a British rider do that, seeing Lambert doing the same with Torren, but the impact of Wolfenden, the influence of Wolfenden, the equipment, the mechanics and personnel, that's made a massive difference. Absolutely, and a credit to Ty for uh, sharing his knowledge here and doing his team proud and also helping a fellow uh, Britain in there and, uh, you know, the crowd, there's tons of crowd, crowd here, isn't there? Just all looking over to see what's going to happen in this heat number five. You can see the bio oil uh, signage there ahead of heat number five. The sponsors of the race are Plumber we have uh, every race sponsored so much going into the the meeting and uh, thanks to everyone who has backed it as we say Plomick sponsoring heat number five with Dan Bewley in red off the inside Mikhail Sozitek in blue off gate two Ty Wolfenden in white off gate three and Matt Zianowski in yellow off the outside so chance for the big boys of Roslav to put on a real show here yeah and uh, Circuit Sozitek got a second place in his first one out so um just behind Robert Lambert, so this is the second ride here on this um, heat number five. Heat number five of Ty Wolfenden's testimonial. Wolfenden rides in white, takes fly, and away they go, and away goes Dan Beauty and red off the inside gate. He's got the advantage here with Wolfenden moving oh, inside. Yanofsky almost kept the back wheel there of Beauty off bed two, and there goes Sersi Tech relegating Yanofsky to the back and nearly relegating. He does relegate Wolfenden to third. Dramatic stuff here as Beauty has the advantage, and Mikhail Sersi Tech has second, and that's leaving the Established Rochlaw 1 2 of Wolfenden and Ninovsky chasing hard on the back. I wonder how come I mentioned him at the beginning. I just had this feeling that he was actually going to get out there and do some damage to the jacket. He did. He's out there keeping magic and both uh, Wolfenden um, uh, honest. Well, it's incredible. Bewley is out in front, and Sozitek is being threatened both inside and out. Wolfen is going to try and fling one down the inside here. Closed off by Sozitek, and Yanofsky tries the outside one-off then four. I think that will work there for Yanofsky to move through into third place, but still Wolfen is being pegged out the back by Sozitek as Bewley is well out in front. Look at the lead of Dan Bewley. Now Wolfen has gone for the outside run, trying to salvage third place. He'll turn back off the final bend. Bewley wins by a mile. Yanofsky is second, and Wolfen can come through for third. Plenty of passing there in heat number five but not in terms of the race leader because Dan Bewley off the inside gate that time was clear out in front and uh, he is very much a potential winner 
after tonight's meeting on that kind of form. And then we saw Janowski and Wolfenden really being given a, a tough ride by Mikhail Kersitek there as they battled on for second and third places, eventually made their way through. But Bewley becoming a big hero amongst the Roslar fans with the scores he's banging in week after week in their league campaign. And Wolfenden in the end salvages third place about to <laughs> for that comes. one. And he's on his, he's on his way end. now to have a look at the action. <laughs> Bewley is the winner of heat number five. Janowski in second place. Wolfenden third. Surzitek out the back. All about Dan Bewley. So start there from the inside gate. And Janowski and Wolfenden forced into a real fight here by Surzitek, Sam. Yeah, they just uh, they stirred it up here in this uh, heat number five right there. Wolfenden really almost coming to uh, collision right there with Dan Bewley's back wheel there. But just luckily was able to pull the bike back a little bit which then lost his ground and then from then on then they had to fight hard to be able to get in there but uh it was a difficult uh, first corner for, for Ty Wolfenden, but Dan Bewley had no problems from the inside gate, getting out in front, getting some clean air, as we see the battle right here going on for the for the minor places in this one right here, with the Wolfenden's coming up the inside there, but that's just, it's all about uh, getting some uh, track space now. Good stuff there in Heat 5 with the home riders coming through. The rain is falling somewhat heavier now as we head towards uh, Heat number 6. Dan Bewley, top of the score chart with six points, from two rides, Matsinovsky on four, and we'll see those other early winners uh, shortly. Uh, Lambert, Smartek, and Holder all with three points. Wolfenden moving on to three. Heat number six then is uh, next up. Monster are the sponsors, and uh, Martin Bashlik rides in red. There is Jamin Lipsy in the white helmet colour. Matthias Nielsen will go in blue, and Patrick Dudek will be off the outside gate. It is heat number six of Ty Wolfenden's testimonial meeting. And uh, as we say, just a bit of rain coming down. The clouds have uh, suddenly darkened. We started the meeting in bright sunshine. You can see uh, some uh, lighter cloud there overhead. It's going to get uh, a bit uh, coming through, and hopefully, no more than that. Here's the lineup across the starting gate for Heat 6. Vashlik goes in red off the inside. Uh, Nielsen in blue off gate 2. Lizzie in white off gate 3. And Dudek in yellow off the outside. Uh, uh, Martin Vashlik. Uh, picking up uh, second place in his first ride. Let's see if he can uh, get more here in heat number six. <laughs> you can see the rain is coming down, I can tell you that, and, uh, but the, the meeting is uh, very much continuing, and Bachelik has the inside gate. Nielsen gate two, Litty gate three, Dudek off the outside. Here we go then with heat six, bit of a long hold there by the referee on the tape, but they go away, and Martin Bachelik in red, has the lead into the first bend and out of the second bend. Dudek in yellow tries to make his move around the outside, neck and neck with Litzy into bend three and four, and now he's going to try and chase off after Bachelik out in front. Bachelik, the Slovakian, has the advantage. It's Patrick Dudek in second place, Litzy in third with Nielsen out the back. Looks good here for Martin Bachelik. Yeah, not a bad uh, first corner there for him to get him in that position right there. The rain coming down, I don't think will be affecting these um, riders too much out there. It's just a little bit of a drizzle, but there's a little bit of a chance that Dudek wants to get back in the action there. He didn't, he made a mess of his first race out on this uh, Vratsov track, so this second one right now, he's the best he's going to do so far the way it's looking. Is that second place? Well, Patrick Dudek talked about the, uh, the inside there off the fourth bend. He was pumped off by Martin Vratsov. It lost him ground, and Jamin Lindsay almost came back into the equation. But I think they're pretty much set here in this uh, heat number six now. Martin Bachelet with the advantage, a man really re, uh, his form revived in, uh, in recent weeks, and Bachelet is the winner of heat six, ahead of uh, Dudek with Lindsay in third position. Good start there from the inside by Bachelet, really did control that race throughout, was under no real threat. I mentioned just that one effort by Dudek, when Dudek tried to fling it down the inside into the first bend, and um, didn't make it, and that did put him uh, briefly under pressure out of the hands of uh, Jamin Lidzi. But no real change there, Martin Bachelet, the winner of Heat 6, Dudek in second place, and Lidzi in third. You know, they say if you dance, the rain goes away. Well, at least my dance seems. I just danced a little bit, and I'm going to do that. Just come up alongside of him on his bike. That's how relaxed this place is right now. <laughs> we got a bike sitting right next to him. Dudek wants to come in and see the replay. And here you go, Dudek. It's all about this. Vashik on the inside in the red. Gets himself in there. You, Dudek, came on the outside in the yellow helmet color right up on the high line right there. Had to work extra hard to get into turn three. And still the little Lidzi right there trying to get in there and secure that. But it was all about following the... Uh, Margin, margin a little bit. 
as I'm looking over to my left here to but see what Dudek's Patrick reaction Dudek is. Patrick Dudek is looking so good. intently at our screen, yeah. watching every moment of that race <laughs> and uh, just uh, reliving the moment there. So uh, anyway, he's now making his way back into the pits. We'll, we'll check up with him in the next uh, grading break, I hope. Dan Bewley still leads. Ty Wolf in his testimonial meeting with six points. Martin Vastrink moves on to five. Matt Sienowski is on four. Heat seven features uh, Chris Holder, Bartek Kowalski, Gleb Chuganov and Yunus Jeppesen. There you see the, uh, the rain coming down. Um, it's not uh, desperately heavy. And as you said, Sam, I don't think it's going to affect the track conditions too much. They were aware there could be a few showers during the day and the evening. And uh, let's hope that it uh, pushes off uh, pretty soon uh, so that there is no damage to the uh, conditions. Of, uh, Sam is just um, getting out his wet weather gear. Um, I'm getting my wet weather gear on now. Come on, Of course, course I came away. with no wet weather gear or any kind of extra gear. But uh, <laughs> there we go. Look at the weather forecast, which was warm and sunny. Chris Holder on the inside in heat number seven in the red helmet colour. Bartek Kowalski in blue of gate two. Gleb Chuganov in white of gate three. And Yunus Jefferson goes in yellow off the outside. Tolls is the sponsor of heat seven. And the green light comes on from the referee. Clean start. Away they go. And Chris Holder from the inside. Yunus Jefferson from the outside. They'll contest the second bend. Jefferson, can he make it around the outside? There he certainly can. Fine move there by Jefferson to take the advantage. And now Chuganov goes steaming through on the inside. Looks to get the better of Chris Holder. Chuganov tries to move it through on the inside on lap two. Holder controls him just about mid-track. Chris Holder, Chuganov trying hard. Good ride out in front here by Jefferson. Yeah, Chris Holder's getting beat up here on this one. Right Jefferson gets himself out in front. He's just checking out now. They're, they're just up the inside. Chuganov knows his track pretty well. He's cut up the inside. See if he can just get underneath Chris Holder. Holder. Chris is just riding a nice mid-track uh, line and if he stays where he's at he just might hold on to that. I thought this had the writing on the wall on this one I thought for sure was going to be Holder but he didn't have it all his own way. Well Eunice Jefferson does have the ability of uh, pulling in big wins we've seen that in the last couple of years in the actual league well out in front here ahead of uh, Chris Holder Gleb Chogunov in third over Kowalski and this is a good ride here by Jefferson the Chester Hover rider a late fall up for the meeting after last night's injuries he wins it it's close for second but uh, Chris Holder will hang on over Chogunov and that is a win for Jefferson, the rider in yellow in heat number seven. Good stuff there from the Dane as he takes it. The uh, second place goes to uh, Chris Holder and Gleb Chuganoff in third spot. And I've just been told that we're not going to have any more breaks right now while the, the drizzle's coming down. They're going to go straight through with the racing to make sure that they get through some of the competition right now. Okay, if that it just makes so sense. happens to come down really hard. I think it, I'm hopeful there's, a, there's actually a break in the sky to our right of blue sky and uh, hopefully it won't uh, last too long. Jefferson the winner of heat seven. Holder in second place. Chuganoff in third with uh, Kowalski at the back. Good ride there by uh, Yunus Jefferson. Really had to work hard on the outside of uh, bend number two because uh, Chris Holder had made a good start. Here is uh, Robert Lambert in the red helmet colour in heat eight which is sponsored by Betard of course uh, uh, long time uh, backers of uh, Roslav Speedway and they are the sponsors of heat eight Lambert Smarslik, Lindgren and Francis Gust. So, uh, and we saw plenty of uh, young Francis Gust last year in the uh, Under-21 we World did. Championship. A big talent for the future. Rosler, I believe so, because he's actually their asset. Uh, being loaned back out to Poznan in the uh, in the third tier. But uh, one to look out for. There's Freddie Lindgren. There's Bartosz Schmalzik. And Robert Lambert off the inside gate. Mm, and Freddie is trying a little bit of something on his bike. I had a word with him in earlier on when I noticed that his uh, rear section was a little bit different. Uh, than the ones I've seen and he says uh, I said oh what's how that thing work for you and he says well he made him act like he's used it all the time and he said no it's the first time and I kind of went seriously he goes yeah so whether he's still on that or not I don't know that but well let's see if he uh, makes the uh, start he got a third place in his first ride Lambert will go off the inside in red Smarzik in blue off gate two Lingwood in white off gate three and Gust goes in yellow off the outside I guess this kind of meeting in a way, a testing ground for some, as Lingwood has told you. You yep. can only find out how it works against the really big boys. Absolutely, and what better place to do it when you know that uh, you know, you're know you out there just entertaining the crowd that's come here to support Ty Wolfenden's uh, 
history here at Wrocław than now. We get out there, some big riders. We got Bartosz Magic in this race, and you got Robert Lambert right up the inside of him. What a better test. He takes Lambert inside, half the gate two, Lingren gate three, Gust off the outside green light, and away they go. Lambert Gust are there from the inside in red. Lingren battling with Smiles Lick, Smiles again blue holds the inside line off Ben two. Lingren tries to speed around the outside. Lingren does get plenty of speed around the outside, but Smiles Lick will run him wide on turn three and four. Might give a chance to Francis Gust as well. Lingren's done well to make it back round Smiles Lick. Lambert's got the advantage over Lingren in second. Lingren will try now on Lambert on the inside. They're tight. Lambert just holds Lingren at bay. Yeah, you can see that uh, he's got some uh, something something going on right there. It's very Lingard just getting through there and trying to see if he can catch up with Robert Lambert. I reckon the track is definitely playing its uh, its part there with uh, Smarzlik staying on that inside. That little bit of drizzle on there would make that a little bit slick. When you're up in the dirt line there, it does make it a little bit easier to get some traction, especially when the water's mixing it. But here comes Marshall back up the inside of Freddie. Freddie Lingren really wide off Ben 4, but did get plenty of speed into turns 1 and 2 to close off Bartosz Marzlik uh, once again. And Robert Lambert race leads, as he's been doing plenty of in recent weeks. Really impressive again for Robert Lambert as he takes heat 8 in a quality field over Freddie Lingren and Bartosz Marzlik. It's a second win of the meeting for Robert Lambert and Freddie Lindgren defeats Bartosz Schmalzlik and uh, that uh, is an interesting result as well out of heat number eight but Lambert makes the inside gate work and uh, really control that one because the scrap was all about what happened between uh, Lindgren and Schmalzlik. Lindgren had to uh, work for it but uh, made it uh, into second place at the expense of Bartosz Schmalzlik so Lambert the winner of heat eight, Lindgren in second place Smalzik in third, and that completes two rides apiece. Yeah, well, that means that two rides apiece so far for the Brits that have been invited here from Ty Wuppadin. They both got six point each, and this is how he's done it. Robert Lambert in the red from the inside, gets out in front and just checks out on the blue helmet right there. That is Bartosz Schmalzik trying to hold on to that second place, but in the white, deep goes Freddie Lingrid right up in that dirt line and just gets the power to go right past Schmalzik there on that uh, straightaway there. And as they keep battling on here, the race goes on. But Robert Lambert, clearly the winner of this heat, and he did it in good style. And we see Robert Lambert and Dan Bewley both with two rides and two wins. That is uh, some exactly. performance from the two British uh, riders there at this stage of the meeting. Dave, are you getting wet? Well, it is. It is. To be fair, it's raining. So yes, that is a uh, uh, that is happening. Uh, Dan Bewley is the uh, Dan Bewley and Robert Lambert are the meeting leaders with six points apiece. Chris Holder with five. Martin Vashlik with five. Jeppesen, Zmarzlik, and Janowski all on four. Wuffenden and Lindgren on three. Yes, it's a damp evening, but it's a, it's a special occasion. Um, you've come prepared for it. I haven't, but hey ho, <laughs> we're enjoying ourselves and we're seeing some good stuff. Yeah, meaning I got a little bit of a raincoat on, and I didn't expect it to rain, but I just thought I'd bring a little light jacket and it's helping me out at the moment but uh, they're going to continue on with the racing not many delays so I'm not going to be able to go throw my microphone into people's faces to see what the reactions is I'm looking behind me right there I see Ty Wolfenden and Greg Hancock having a good laugh about something and uh, Ty doing his gestures of uh, the throttle and the clutch so maybe some of the some of the information that um, Greg has given him uh, maybe before this event or uh, maybe before he went up in that plane to jump um, getting out of the starts might be helping them. The points don't say that, but uh, maybe they're discussing that. So just giving uh, Francis Ghost a bit of time here. We're not having a, a standard sort of track raid, but obviously Francis Ghost does have two rides on the trot because that always happens when you uh, complete a block of four races. So it's not quite a, a straight back on the circuit for Heat 9 because Ghost has to be... Uh, refueled and retired and whatever else uh, what's going on here Sam on the bike? Well they just seen the, the back chain adjusted up right there they changed something there on that one but there's a lot of dirt on that bike so whether they're going to ride that one I'm not sure. Well they make their way on the circuit for heat nine touch wood I think the race is about stopping here Sam yeah. um, with, uh, and there is a bit of blue sky overhead too um, so that's good news. Patrick Dudek is uh, going to be riding here in Heat 9. Francis Gust, I mentioned, with a very quick turnaround. Two rides on the trot. Michael Surgitek goes in white. And there is Chris Holder, who rides in yellow for Heat number 9, which is uh, sponsored by Amelus. And uh, Dudek inside. He was so good in the uh, Tetero Grand Prix. And Holder, of course, former world champion. Third ride of uh, the meeting for each of these competitors. Reminder, it's 20 heats in total. And uh, then we have the top four who will compete in the, the final. And Patrick Dudek looking to uh, 
get his uh, gate spot sorted out there. And look at the build-up of dirt there on the outside of gate four, which uh, Chris Holder try and find the right place to start from there on the outside gate in yellow. Yeah, you would think that would be the place. Well, I would say that would probably be the place because a little bit of rain it will be soaked up by the little bit of cushion you can see up against the fence right there of the dirt there. Uh, but Patrick Dudek will be on that very inside gate trying to make a, a good start to get himself in front. Um, it will be a difficult one, I would say. Uh, but um, the way the Chris Holder did look so quick in his last ride, he had to really do a lot of defending, so maybe he's made some changes. Um, this is a meeting that I'm, I'm sure that they want to win. Um, uh, it's just fun as well, but you know, you know, when you're out there, you want to do a good job for the fans that are watching. Eight number nine sponsored by Atlas. We do that good. So Zizek and Holder, and Zizek makes a good one there off the inside gate. Tries to pin it down there across the fence. Zizek does so, trying to block the run from the outside there of uh, Chris Holder, who looks to try and make it through there into second place. But uh, Francis Goose fronts it up the inside and really tries to block out Holder, who keeps it rolling around the outside and gets back into second place. But whilst that was going on, it was Patrick Dudek who was stretching his way clear out in front. It's Holder in second, Goose in third, and Sully Tech at the back. Yeah, Goose uh, definitely played his part in there, made uh, Holder have to really go a little bit deeper. Goose is not done yet, he's just got a little bit of drive. Um, right there coming off that corner, but it's looking pretty comfortable. Well, out in front is Patrick Dudek from the inside gate. He definitely made that one count for him, and he's got that bike working pretty good. He didn't start off too good so far this evening, um, but uh, he's been good at zero a second, and now possibly three more points. Yeah, Dudek was seriously uh, studying uh, what happened in his previous ride afterwards with the replays, and he's uh, put it right here in this one. He has the advantage over Chris Holder with uh, Goose in third, but there's the style of uh, Patrick Dudek, the former world number two, did that five years ago. Dudek wins heat nine. Impressive ride by Patrick Dudek there over Chris Holder. Of course, it was uh, Jason Doyle, fellow Australian, who actually uh, beat Dudek to the world title that year, back in uh, back in the day, back in 2017. But Dudek has his aspirations of getting back to that level and winning Heat 9 in Simon Wolfenden's testimonial meeting. Dudek wins it then, Chris Holder in second place, and Francis Gust gets himself uh, off the mark for the evening with a point there at the expense of Michael Sozitek. Yeah, good point there that you brought up when um, uh, Patrick Duda came in here and was watching the replays off our monitor. Obviously, he was looking for something that he wanted to uh, address and went in the pits and maybe possibly change it. And there he is right now behind us again. He wants to see it again. So obviously, he's focusing on something. So if this is a meeting for trying things out and uh, learning what maybe some of the changes you are trying, um, you know, could be the difference of winning and losing. So there you go. Patrick Duda out in front on this one right here. And... Um, they put it in there, and Goose was really uh, doing his best to be able to keep uh, Chris Holder, the Australian, honest out there. And, uh, and Chris Holder kept it in the dirt and got that thing stretched out and followed Dudek through for second place. So there is Patrick Dudek, the winner of heat number nine. And we move on to heat 10, and we'll see Freddie Lindgren, Ty Wolfenden, who will be going in the blue helmet cover. There is Ty. Bartek Kowalski yep. rides in white, and Jamin Lidsey rides in yellow. Score so far then, you see Chris Holder on top of the player with seven points from three rides. Dan Bewley and Robert Lambert both on six. That's two rides and two wins for those two riders. Patrick Dudek and Martin Bashlik, they are both on five. Jeppesen, Smarzlik and Minofsky, they all got four. I am regularly joined by one American legend. I'm now joined by another American legend, four-time world champion, Greg Hancock. Greg, it is a pleasure to be with you. First of all, how did you enjoy your ride? Uh, I had a blast. You know, like, for me, that was uh, to feel that adrenaline rush. It's the first time I've ridden in front of a crowd again. And uh, yeah, it was it was epic, man. I, you know, I rode here for seven years and uh, been working with the team now for almost two years. So it's uh, yeah, it was epic. It was epic. Now, as heat number 10 comes to the line with Lingo and Wuffins and Kowalski and Lindsay, have you ever commentated on Speedway? I, I'll say that again. Have you commentated on Speedway? I, I have done a little bit, but uh, you're going to have to excuse me. <laughs> Who are these guys again? Freddie Lingo and Ty Wuffins and Bartek Kowalski and Jamin Lindsay at the start of the line for heat 10. They go away. It's a good start by Lingwin in red. Off the inside, Wuffins tries to turn back in blue. Kowalski gave Lindsay a real shove on that first turn. Lindsay in yellow turns back up the inside and moves through into third place. Lingwin leads from Wuffins and Jamin Lindsay in third place but trying the inside there on Wolfenden and what a star that was uh, from Freddie Lindgren there Greg. Yeah absolutely I mean you can see Wolfie now he's been making quite a few changes over the last couple of weeks and uh, we did a little training out here yesterday too so you can see he's building the speed trying to find whatever dirt is there but uh, Jamin's coming in hard. 
Yeah, whilst he's trying to get the move there on Freddie Lindgren, Lindsay's trying the inside run. Lindsay trying to move down the inside of Woofinden. Woofinden's going he's right here, though. He's pushing right into the right spot. Look oh, superb <laughs> from Woofinden. There's some rivalry there down the years with Freddie Lindgren. And they've taken him apart because through goes Lindsay into second. Lindsay is still trying to win it, it must be said. Woofinden's got the advantage. That was some move around the outside, Greg. Absolutely. Yeah, like we just said there, Woofie was building the speed. And now we're starting to see the Woofie of old. So uh, I really believe this guy's on a comeback mission right now. So uh, watch him for the rest of the year. Ty Woofenden wins heat number 10. Woofenden over Jamin Lindsay. Freddie Lindgren in third place. Woofy, woofy, woofy. <laughs> With regards once again to Nigel. Greg, super stuff. Super stuff from Ty Woofenden. Really built up there on the outside. And Freddie, I think we've got Lindsay, of course, challenging to on the inside. You can't be in two places at once. No, that's right. I mean, it's a, this track's so, it's so great because it's so wide. You've got a lot of racing lines. You've got a lot of opportunities. And, you know, if one guy's taking one line, you better have the thing working because you get a guy like Woofie or even Jamin there who are riding two completely different lines, making up ground, and uh, you're really never safe. Well, that will do. The, the reaction that the crowd have given to Wolfenden winning that race, probably no surprise given the way uh, that they uh, they love him here. But Wolfenden the winner, Lindsay in second, Lindgren in third, and Kowalski at the back. And uh, Ty's had a couple of meetings which have been tough in the last few weeks because he's got this on his mind too. But here it is, all coming right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's you know focusing on starts uh, really lately and trying to get it, uh, trying to find that 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 fine rhythm that everybody's looking for. But. You know, everybody's so fast now, so if you're not quick out of the start, the, the chances of passing are not easy, especially at the GP level. Well, here is uh, Jamin Lidsey in yellow, and he's putting the pressure on. He's one of the up-and-coming breed, but there's the move to yeah. swoop around the outside. Jamin pretty much pushed Woofie right into the spot that he needed to be there just to grab the dirt, and uh, I don't think uh, Freddie was ready for that. Indeed, and Freddie somewhat surprised as uh, Lindsay also came through on the inside, and the fans certainly loving that. And uh, Lindsay, I think Lindsay loved it as well. Even. <laughs> so, uh, Absolutely, poor, poor Freddie. You know, I mean, he had one yeah. on the inside, one on the outside, but uh, hey, that's the name of the game. Very much so. Heat number 11 is next up. Bartosz Marzik rides in red off the inside. Matsy Inoski off gate two. Jonas Jeppesen gate three. Martin Vashlik off the outside. Greg, you are closely associated with Matsy Inoski. I'm sure he is desperate to get one over Bartosz Marzik in World Championship terms. What's Magic got to do to make that step, make that final step against Bartosz? Uh, well, you know, I mean, Bartosz is, uh, he's the double world champ, you know, and the guy's, uh, he's phenomenal. So when I watch him, I just look, how would I beat him? And I've got, you know, the things that I would do as a rider, and I try to sort of uh, hand those tools over to someone like Magic. And he's, he's got all the ingredients, you know, it's like built, you know, baking a cake. You've got all the ingredients, but if you don't put them in there correctly, that's going to be, a, it's going to be an interesting finish. But uh, it, it's going to be tough. This will be, uh, this is, anytime you race against Bartosz, you want to get one over him, but uh, he's going to come back hungry. Two-star Polish names on the inside, Martin Vazic off the outside, flying start there, Boris and Smarzik off the inside gate, Janowski is going, trying to uh, push Vashlik wide and get through in a second, Vashlik makes a good move there, in yellow around the outside, he's got plenty of pace, Smarzik controls the race out in front, it's Vashlik in second place, Janowski in third, getting past Yunus Jefferson, and now the move down the inside into lap two, that's going to get tight, but a good ride by Vashlik to close off second place. Yeah, that's right, you know, you can see it's so important to make the stars, but Martin's making good lines there and he's trying to keep the bike straight and in the right places so you don't kill your speed but uh, Magic's on the roll now let's see if there's enough to uh, to get him back up there it's going to be tough yeah can he get back into contention he's also going to fend off Jonas Jeppesen at the moment Smalzik is uh, well out clear in front Vashlik in second looks like it's pretty set here Jeppesen having to go here trying to reel back in Matsunoski yeah that's right it's, uh, this will be a tough one you know I mean there's not a lot of dirt out there but uh, it's the same for everybody you got to get the bike cooking up so I'm sure that coming back into the pits they'll make a few adjustments and try and get it right before the end of the night yeah, Bartosz Martin certainly has things hooked up here in heat number 11, winning it from the inside gate. It's a clear win for Bartosz Martin. It's second for Martin Vashlik and it's third for Matze Janowski in race number 11. Smarzik is just so good, and I know you've raced against him as well, but such a tough man. He, he's a tough guy, you know, and uh, obviously Martin Martin and, and Bartosz, they ride together in Gorzhov too, so they, they know so much about each other's style and what they got going on the track, but to be Martin, he must be really excited to ride alongside his, you know, the world champion and learn from him, try to pick up a few paces along the way, but uh, it still hurts to lose to him. <laughs> Smiles at the winner of uh, Heat 11, Vashlik second, Yunovsky in third. Greg, stay with us for one more, so I want to ask you about the British lad shortly, but here's the start from, uh, from Bartosz Smiles. Yeah, look at he's he, he's just superb, man. There's there's he, he's flawless, you know, in most cases, and uh, it takes a lot. You got to be extraordinary to beat this guy. Certainly have, and uh, yeah, it was uh, he's done some extraordinary things as well. There's Yunovsky bumping away with Jefferson, but there's the style of uh, Bartosz Smiles out in front on his way to victory in Heat number 11. 
Moving on to heat 12, and that will feature Dan Bewley, Robert Lambert, Matthias Nielsen, and Gleb Chuganoff. As a Speedway fan myself, a British Speedway fan myself, I'm excited by what I see from Dan Bewley and Robert Lambert. Two British lads really coming good. Absolutely, you know, I've become a really big fan of Dan Bewley over the last year and a half, and uh, working alongside of him, and uh, I, I can't say I'm coaching him because the kid's just amazing. He's a sponge, and whatever you got to say, he's all ears, and he applies everything. But uh, this is the kid, I think, you just got to keep your eye on him because I, I wouldn't doubt if you don't see him on top of the podium in the GP soon, and uh, he's going to be a contender for a long time, so uh, watch this space. If you're expecting Sam Malenko, he's still here. We haven't got rid of him totally, but it's Greg Hancock. Greg, you won't know this. You won't remember this at all. You were the first rider I ever interviewed back in 1997. So wow. there you go. So, so for me, it's an absolute pleasure to, <laughs> to do this. Purely on the inside, Robert Lambert, gate two, Matthias Nielsen, gate three, and Gleb Chuganoff off the outside. Let's see what these British boys can do here in heat 12. That's it. Thanks right. to our sponsors, Bio Oil, Heat 12, Mango, Reggio, Heat 11, and Lucas Brzozowski, Heat number 10. This is cool, because Robert Lambert's been having such a good run, you know, and Dan Bewley's coming up, and actually, I think he's actually pushing Robert, and uh, together these two guys are raising the level for British Speedway. They certainly are. Bewley and Lambert on the inside two gates here, and Bewley is out-trapped at Lambert there. Gleb Chuganoff tries the outside running yellow. Can he split them off the second bend? That's going to be close there as uh, Lambert lifts, and Chuganoff gets the run round the outside. Bewley will try and defend on turn three and four. Round the outside comes Chuganoff with lots of speed. It looks like Bewley has covered him off. And such strides in the last year or two. Rides this track superbly. And Dan Bewley out Ooh. in front. Oh, oh dear. Ouch. Gleb Chuganoff. Oh dear. Oh dear. Gleb Chuganoff had a mechanical failure off the second bend. And that picked up Robert Lambert first of all. And then Matthias Nielsen. And that was ugly and awkward indeed. It looked like something happened to Gleb Chuganoff's bike. Absolutely. Something went wrong there. Maybe a chain broke or something. And uh, uh, I don't like to see that kind of stuff. Because there's just sometimes there's just no room for, uh, for escape. Yeah, well, let's keep our fingers very firmly crossed there. Dan Bewley was uh, one out in front, not the kind of thing you want to happen in any meeting, let alone a, a testimonial. And Chuganoff was actually was riding so well there. He got the, the run around the outside going, and then Lambert was so close to him that he couldn't do too much to avoid. And then Nielsen, who was, who was further behind, also getting involved. And uh, he's, uh, Nielsen is the man uh, nearest to uh, the picture at the moment. And let's hope these three boys get up pretty quickly nothing you can do in that situation for the rider who has the, the failure and then if you're that close behind what what can you do there's nothing you can do you know it's uh you know sitting here it's easy to say a lot of things but uh, being in that position so many times over the years it's just you go into instant uh reaction mode there and you you know that for me the instant the instant is to, to drop the bike as quick as you can, but you're not always in the position to be able to do that, and or you're trying to avoid the crash, and at the same time, something else is in front of you. So sometimes that's uh, you just kind of uh, hold your breath. Well, it looks like Robert Lambert is uh, getting to his feet from what I could see. He was... Uh, There's Adrian Moron there, the famous golfer. Yeah, fast, absolutely. Uh, bike's being brought back to the pits, and um, we're still waiting for any official word on what's happening down there on the second bend. Um, my instinct was that Matthias Nielsen ended up having a, a really nasty incident there. So he went in at speed. Chuganoff, I think, is the man being attended to. Here's Dan Bewley coming back into the pits. As you say, it's good to see that Robert was up there. And uh, I, I, I'm hoping to see if maybe they're clapping their hands. I hope this is a good sign. Yeah, the crowd's uh, certainly applauding uh, as uh, the damage there as it, uh, the bike uh, comes back in. Gleb Chuganoff with the initial issue as he was chasing Dan Bewley and then unfortunately the two riders who were following uh, got involved in the incident and we had three riders coming down so you can see the ambulance is on the circuit um, we won't show you any, any replays of what happened until we know what the situation is with the riders um, and we hope that uh, we do get uh, decent word, good word from the track very shortly after that happened you can hear the crowd, see the crowd applauding Fingers crossed. And uh, fingers very firmly crossed for good news. And I think Matthias Nielsen is uh, being attended to to the left of your picture. And they're currently um, just trying to see whether we can, we can see Gleb Chuganoff. They've certainly got the helmet off, Gleb Chuganoff. And they're, uh, meanwhile, they're looking at the bike. So uh, difficult times. And uh, we are still awaiting any official confirmation on the uh, on the fitness of those riders 
Dan Beauty was uh, well away from it out in front. He made a flying start once again, just showing his uh, mastery of this circuit and the way he's uh, adapted in the, uh, the last couple of years. But uh, everybody else waiting for news, really, on the uh, on the boys who came down. And Chuganoff, of course, uh, sadly for him, having had the, the failure, he actually got collected twice, didn't he? It was Robert Lambert first, and then and then Matthias Nielsen coming in. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, yeah, that's not an easy thing. It's just to yeah, just cross our fingers. I don't really know what to say right now. Yeah, no, absolutely. We're watching uh, Francis Goose um, uh, in the pits, and you can see we've uh, currently got the three medical vehicles on the truck. Um, we are having, we have got some encouraging news coming through that uh, that the three riders are in you know reasonable shape down there. There's, they're not suggesting any anything too serious at this stage, but obviously they are taking every precaution they can, uh, which is quite the right thing to do. There is Gleb Chuganoff. You can see him on the uh, on the stretcher. Just happy to see him sitting up right now, and he's communicating with them. So uh, that's a good sign at this stage. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, Certainly when that happens, uh, you do fear the worst. And uh, uh, Roslav, of course, um, heading to Gorjov on, on Sunday for a, an important meeting. And hoping that they'll have a, a full is there compliment. Too. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Matthias as well. So, uh, as we say, the, the initial word was that um, taking precautions, which is obviously the right thing to do. And uh, so let's hope that, uh, hope that we get good news. Whilst we uh, do have this intermission and the riders make their way uh, back, hopefully everything's okay, we can catch up with Sam Malenko. He's with Dan Bewley. Go, Sam. Go. Got Dan Bewley here unbeaten, but it was in that uh, race there. I know that you don't know what would happen there exactly, but still you're going quite well. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I just hope they're all okay. and. Uh, I seen the red light and when I come out look and it was all three riders but uh, first of all I hope they're okay and uh, yeah we just focus now and I think it will be rerun and uh, keep going. Things are going good for you though. Have you changed something? Are you learning something or is Greg gave you some information or what? Yeah as uh, Mark Lemon always said said when we were at Bellevue uh, we got to, got to adapt so uh, we've been adapting a little bit tonight and uh, you know it's been going good so far but uh, we can't rest we've got to keep it up and keep fighting. Are you enjoying the atmosphere? Yeah, it's awesome. To be honest, like, just uh, outside the stadium, so cool with everything from Monster and all the other things that Ty's put on, Bouncy Castle, and uh, so many people here. So it, it's like, just like a GP, and uh, it's pretty cool. Thanks, Dan. Go, go focus. Thank you. Good to hear from, uh, from Dan Pugh in the pit. So we know the boys are, are, are just about okay. You've seen Gleb Chuganoff being helped in. Um, obviously has been receiving attention. We will take a look at, uh, at what happened. Greg, just talk us through here. Robin Yellow yeah. has the issue. You can see here there's something happened there. It looks like a chain snapped and then obviously uh, Robert, neither Robert or Matias had anywhere to go. But Matias there, it, that didn't look pretty at all. I, this, when you see the replay, I'm really, really happy that all these guys actually are up. That is the nasty moment for Chuganoff. Um, ah. Nielsen Makes you sick. gets taken by the bike rather than the rider. But uh, we're hearing that a possible shoulder injury for Gleb Chuganov. And here you'll probably see why. Yeah, for sure. That left shoulder. Goodness and then Tough th boys. You've been there, Greg. <laughs> Sadly, I, uh, I have been there. And, uh, you know, you're just happy when you walk away from something like that or that you get away, you know, relatively unscathed. But um, there's going to be some, uh, some soreness and pain there for a few days. Very much so. And let's hope that um, let's hope he's fit to take his place on Sunday because you need to win your league matches thing. <laughs> you got that right of course you know I mean, right now it's his health is the main yeah, thing but uh, when it comes to the team you know, you know we want to win we can't afford uh, to miss another rider at the moment and uh, it's been a tough year already without without having Artem in the team and uh, the boys are doing a great job even though it's an uphill battle. Greg absolute pleasure to work with you fantastic right. and uh, really enjoyed it Thank and uh, we will recover some of go shortly <laughs> but uh, wish you and, and Rostov the best of luck the rest of the season and hope all goes well. Thank you very much great to be here. Oh, he, he, just oh, just whilst you're here here's the skydiving. <laughs> he, <laughs> uh, he's been trying to uh, prod me into doing this with him for, for the last year you know and he hasn't got it there yet but uh, you know I got to convince my wife that I <laughs> that <that's laughs> it's on my bucket list honest. <laughs> really? <laughs> sure no hold you on that. Greg thank Thanks ever so much. Thank let's, you. Um, let's hear from uh, from Ty with Sam. So, uh, I got Ty with me. With me, uh, that was pretty, pretty, pretty bad uh, stuff there. And I know that uh, you need, last thing you want is anybody getting hurt. And that was a pretty dangerous fall. Yeah, Gleb. I don't know if you watched the replay, but I think Gleb's chain broke uh, coming out of the corner and buried himself in, and then got cleared by a few of the other boys. So um, he's on the way to hospital. He's in a bit of pain, but uh, it's motorsport, right? 
Well, we got we got that on the positive side of the thing, just skydive. Let's get get some action right here. So that was pretty wild. We're getting a lot of little clips, and uh, there's plenty of things going on when you guys were up there. Yeah, it's actually funny. It was it's quite boring because I jump solo, but I can't jump in a stadium until I've done 200 jumps uh, because I because I was on a tandem. You can't really do too much apart from a free fall, and I've done I've done like 27 jumps. So I was just sat there just like looking at the scenery, like, well, oh yeah, this is nice. What's going on? But uh, yeah, when I jump solo, we can do a heap more stuff. Tracking, uh, delta, lefts, rights, back flips, front flips. Go head first, get to like 220 kilometers an hour. It's pretty fun. Pretty exhilarating, as you see, adrenaline junkie, eh? Dude, uh, when you don't get a buzz from racing a, a motorbike, then you have to do something else. So jumping out of planes is what's working for me at the moment, and uh, jumping off cliffs is next. One more thing there. I know this has probably been on your mind a lot building up for this meeting and stuff right now. Do you think you're feeling a sense of relief now that you've gotten this far and it's going on? I feel a, I'll feel a sense of relief when I'm at the monster party getting absolutely shit-faced later. That's when I'll feel relief. But uh, the last few weeks has been pretty stressful, so uh, it's good to get it on. Like The fan zone's been amazing, man. People were... The atmosphere there was, was just pumping and uh, the kids were having a ball and face painting and all the stuff going on for them and I'm just stoked to pull it off and to have a crowd like that. Like normally in Poland they don't come to meetings like this. They're, they're pretty like, you know, the extra league of fine, a championship, the top riders from the year before, all that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, there might be like one or two thousand come for it. And I was wondering if it was going to be the same for this, but, dude, it's incredible. You're such a champ, man. Everybody's here to support you, buddy. And I want to ask one more thing. Did you get a tattoo when you're on the TT on your hand? Yeah, I just had a bit of space that needed filling, so I just filled in my fingertips, blacked out my thumbs, got some shrooms on the side of my wrist, and a little anarchy sign here. So, yeah, I'm just looking at the white bits and seeing what I can put there now. Yeah, well, we're really enjoying everything, and we're going to keep uh, doing little snippets of that skydive right now and keep enjoying that. Ty, pleasure to be here with you, buddy. Thanks for coming, mate. Cheers. Thanks to Sam and Ty, here's some more action, and look at that, wow, the scenes above. We uh, we flew in conventionally this morning um, uh, on an aeroplane, and um, wow, you can, you can see the stadium in the uh, in the background, that's the target, um, and as we say, he was the first out of the plane, they did take, I think they, they, they skydived all the way around Roslav to end up in the stadium uh, after the rest of the boys, but um, it was... Uh, it's just incredible scenes, incredible shots there of the city and uh, Ty uh, doing everything for his testimonial meeting and um, obviously uh, not uh, wanting to see the incident that we saw there in uh, Heat 12 but uh, Kleb Choganoff looks like he's going to be uh, in hospital. Sam, welcome back. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I was actually visually watching that um, when Greg was sitting in my spot. I'm not going to let that happen again. No, just kidding. <laughs> and, uh, you did get four world titles. <laughs> yeah, I thought, yeah, all right, I'll take it. No, um, yeah, it was pretty pretty bad. I mean, he, he lost power. It was a chain, I, I believe, that come off. It looked like, like the chain came off. We lost power. And I'm sure from watching the replays, that's what you've... Uh, um, found out. Yeah, and it was the collision there with Lambert who simply couldn't avoid him. That that's would have yeah. done the damage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a, it was it was. I felt felt a really downer at the time when it happened because nobody wants to know anybody to get hurt on such a, a fun meeting. But it looks like that maybe he'll build himself back Here's up. Here's the replay, Sam. Yeah, you can see right there. Yeah, there's just nowhere for anybody to go. That was just it. it looked bad in in this in this clip now. But when I first seen it, it looked even worse to me because I just seen from the front of those guys, them going over each other. And, um, you know, there's never a good crash or a bad crash. I just hope that, uh, you know, they, they can pick the pieces back up here and uh, chugging up is okay. But yeah, wow, that was that was a pretty hard pretty hard hit. Yeah, we saw uh, Gleb Chuganov uh, leaving or being placed into the uh, ambulance, which is currently uh, leaving the circuit. We saw Matthias uh, Nielsen uh, being helped back into the pits um, via the, um, the, the other uh, medical vehicle. And Robert Lambert was up on his knees pretty quickly and, and back on his feet. So, um, yeah, let's just hope Gleb Chuganov's going to be OK. Um, we were talking to Greg about how they've got big meetings to come with Roslab. They don't want to lose their key riders. Sure. Um, but uh, for his health is uh, first and foremost. Fingers crossed for him. Mm. Yeah, there's what we call Monster Joe. He's uh, really excited. He's played a big part of this. So Monster Energy's uh, brought the show here for Ty, and um, I had a chat with him. 
and um, he's excited about all the stuff they did out uh, outside of the stadium and um, was really pleased with everything. So a reminder of the meeting standing so far with Bartosz Schmalzlik, Chris Holder and Martin Vashlik all on seven points from three rides. A reminder, the top four go through to the final. Dan Bewley and Robert Lambert both unbeaten with six from two because, of course, we'll await a rerun of Heat 12, which does feature uh, Bewley and Lambert. Ty Wolfenden also on six points this time from three rides and then we have Dudek and Yunoski both on five. So hopefully uh, we'll get uh, Robert Lambert. I'm just looking uh, back around the pit, Sam, to see if we've got any uh, information on, uh, on Robert Lambert. And hopefully he'll be able to continue because he's very much a potential finalist here. That's the Matthias Nielsen camp. Well, Ty, Ty's just walking into our pit. Nielsen our and Juggernaut are out. Uh, Nielsen and Juggernaut are out. What about uh, Lambert? Was he OK after that? Right, Ty's just telling us that uh, Nielsen and Juggernaut are both out of the meeting. Yep. Do and we think Robert, Robert Lambert's OK, Ty? Yeah, it looks like he's okay. Yeah, yeah. Good. Thanks for that. Thanks for the update. So hopefully, uh, yeah. Hopefully that will be uh, good news for Robert Lambert, and obviously let John off wish him all the best. And Nielsen took a, a really heavy crash as well. So uh, fingers crossed for those boys as the uh, crowd give their applause. Then. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So Ty coming across to give us the information, and um, what that will probably mean is that we'll see at some point, uh, well, probably in the rerun of Heat 12, uh, the uh, the next the uh, reserve, which is Matthias Panich, uh, who's also a uh, Roslav youngster as well, and he'll be going, uh, going up against the uh, the two British boys. So Panich, I think, will be replacing uh, Matthias Nielsen uh, in Heat 12 in white, uh, because Webb Chuganov will be the rider excluded by the referee for uh, being the cause of the stoppage when he had the uh, the mechanical failure. So it will be three only for the uh, restart of Heat 12 due to that uh, exclusion. So I'm going to make his way back into the uh, the pits and hopefully uh, grab a rider whilst we await the uh, the rerun and um, see what, uh, what the word is from uh, pit lane. I can tell you the bikes are being uh, prepared. Uh, Dan Bewley is making his way towards his bike to come on the circuit. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, uh, I think we can uh, catch up with, uh, with Sam, with Sam and Magic. We're giving hugs here because we haven't seen you in a while. Magic, how are you? I'm fine, you know, I'm a uh, great day. Um, we don't have much time and uh, to, to race like, like today, you know, um, with, uh, with huge fun, you know, so I'm um, um, enjoy just uh, after this crash. I hope the boys are boys are okay. I'm um, glad. Um, I hope he's okay, you know. Yeah, on the positive side of things, we're here for Ty Wolfenden. We know Ty would never want anybody to go away with any injury, but what has Ty done for you and uh, his career that you've been around him? Um, you know, we we met on Greg's testimonial, so uh, that was a long time ago. Uh, we became a friends very very quick uh, always have good time together and uh, support like uh, support together uh, as a brothers so um, enjoy and follow 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 uh, with the team you know so he's a great guy and uh, I'm happy to be here tonight today really good, really good to see you buddy keep going okay Magic, uh, Magic and Ty, teammates with Roslav since uh, 2014 when uh, when Magic made his return to uh, this club because he, ha he had had um, a couple of uh, years away after a spell with Tarnoff but came back in 14 and they've enjoyed uh, plenty of uh, plenty of success down the years. So we have three only for the uh, the restart of Heat 12. It's great to see uh, that Robert Lambert is able to continue and we uh, certainly send our best wishes to uh, uh, to uh, Gleb Choganoff and uh, Matthias Nielsen who are unable to complete the meeting. Nielsen a non-starter in Heat 12, the restart. So Matthias Panic there he, uh, in, in the uh, white helmet colour. Uh, there he is coming into line on gate number three for a call-up to the main event. Three only with Choganoff excluded and we get set for Heat number 12. A restart with uh, Bewley off the inside in red, Lambert in blue off gate two and Panic off the outside in white. Certainly uh, at the first time, Sam. Beauty was uh, well out in front. He looks a, a real class act here tonight. Yeah, he's um, he's uh, actually uh, really, really wanting to do good here. I can tell. We're just going talking to him. He's seriously thinking about everything, and he's proven on the racetrack.
fact that he's uh, he's got the speed now, so he doesn't want to make a mistake. He's going to have to work hard to beat Robert Lambert in this one, I'm sure. Result then, all things 12 with Buley. Lambert, uh, Patel, Panic, the reserve, who goes in white, and away they go. Uh, Buley again has made the start over, and Lambert gets the first bend in front. Lambert holds the inside in blue, picks up some drive, and just a, a bike or so behind as they go into the third bend. Robert Lambert on Dan Buley, the two Brits who, uh, of course, were uh, key in the Speedway of Nations after tired crashed out on day one last year and Lambert really picks up the drive there. He was looking for whatever traction he can get away from his fellow countrymen there by going up against the fence, hitting that berm right there, and we just see the result of that. He just jerked it forward so quick there, but he got a little bit more distance away from Robert. And of course, Tom Bewley has been uh, doing lap after lap of this circuit uh, over recent years as he's uh, climbed the rankings and climbed the, the importance of seniority in the Rosslaw side with the uh, wind that he's been getting, the thick scouts he's been taking. And uh, he moves on to his last lap with uh, Lambert in second place and Panic in third. Huey doing well in the Grand Prix, doing well last year in the Speedway Euro Championship. We'll be back in that in a couple of weeks' time as well. Busy times for four race wins. A third on the bounce for Dan Buley in heat 12 over Robert Lambert with Matthias Panic taking third place. The reserve comes home for a point. So Buley in a world class field here leads Ty Wolfinger's testimonial clearly with nine points out of nine and Robert Lambert is on eight. Celebrations and congratulations between the two. Brits there after heat 12 as Dan Buley is the clear winner. You know, whenever um, you get invited to these um, uh, testimonial meetings or benefit meetings, let's call it, at the same time, Dan Buley would be one to prove that he's got a stage that is such exciting that uh, Ty Wilkins put together. For him to make any mistakes right now, he would not want that to happen. But at the bonus side of it is, maybe other top riders are doing some testing. And it's his opportunity then to be able to go out there and sneak all the points. He's very focused. And in this race here, with uh, Lambert right there coming up the inside of him, I mean, uh, Bewley had the, had the race because he was on the inside. And right there, we just seen the back wheel of him looking for any little bit of grip to get away from uh, Robert Lambert. And right there, he proved that he's uh, serious about winning races out there. So that's three race wins for the fella. Yep, three out of three for uh, for Dan Bewley. I think we're going to have the truck uh, grading taking place. So Sam, on your way, find, find us a guest <laughs> or two. <laughs> See you shortly. <laughs> In the meantime, here are the uh, the standings with Dan Bewley. Nine points from three rides. Robert Lambert with eight. Bartosz Malzik, Chris Holder and Martin Bashlik. They all have seven. Remember, it's the top four to the final after they've all completed five rides. Uh, so we're woofing in six. So Dudek five, Yunoski on five, and then the rest are Jeppesen and Lindgren both on four. That's how things stand at the moment uh, with 12 hits gone. Thankfully, that rain shower we had um, earlier, about half an hour or so ago, has uh, passed away. And we now once again have dry and pleasant conditions. So the need to rush things on which there was, has abated, and there'll be a bit of track work and further entertainment as well uh, uh, on the uh, on the centre green. As we say, big crowd, lots of excitement, lots of anticipation about the meeting, and uh, lots of enjoyment as well. Plenty happening on and off the track. So much backing from the sponsors getting behind the meeting, and uh, one of these uh, choreographed routines now to entertain the fans who have uh, packed out the main grandstand here this uh, evening. It's all going very well indeed. Uh, for this uh, meeting as far as uh, Dan Bewey is concerned with three rides and three wins. Uh, Robert Lambert is on eight. Let's get down to the pits because I think Sam has caught up with Jamin Lidsey. Wow, what do you think? So far so good? Yeah, you know, I'm so happy just to be a part of Ty's day, you know. Um, mass massive effort from him to put this event on and um, it's a privilege to be here riding, riding for him and with ever, all the rest of these great riders. Yeah, yeah. And at the end of the day, are you here for, for trying to do really well, obviously, but are you testing anything or are you just out for the rides? Obviously, I want to do well. Um, I'm against the, some good riders here and, you know, uh, I just need to race more and I want to, yeah, do the best against these guys and, um, you know, hopefully I'm racing against these guys sooner in the Grand Prix rather than later, but, um, you know, there's a lot of work to do between now and then, but, um, yeah, hopefully I can be there one day. Right now it's all about Ty, though, and I appreciate your good words about him. How long have you known Ty? Uh, closely only the last, say, year and a half, you know. Um, 
uh, I've got a young fella now and he's got uh, two young daughters so um, we try and spend a bit of time together now to you know more so for them because we're living in a foreign country and um, the kids need to uh, you know communicate with English speaking kids so um, you know I've been uh, been on the phone to him a bit in the last 12 months so he's a good guy to have around for sure. Nice to hear that buddy anyway have fun for the rest of the night. Awesome thank you. Good so. luck, Jamin Lidzi. Very much one to watch out for in the future. Riding for Lechno in the uh, Extra Liga, and uh, they have a big meeting as well at the weekend. Sam is going to take us for a wander around the pits. Go for it, Sam. Right, oh, so right now we're in Wrocław pits. I mean, this is a, for, for, they're not traditional pits, but in Poland, they got such a big investment uh, with um, a lot of their capital. They put it back in here. So when you get uh, all the backdrops of these pits right here are all covered up, but behind those drapes are monitors and stuff like that for the riders during their competitions to keep an eye on what's going on. That's how, that's how much investment that uh, Poland has put into their uh, pits and stuff like that. And to go anywhere else in the world and race, if they're not getting this kind of treatment, I think these guys would be a little bit depleted. But Vrasov at the moment has got a, an incredible uh, investment and it just goes to show what they mean by putting on a good speedway is keeping the riders comfortable in their surroundings and this is such a great atmosphere being down here in the pits the mechanics got plenty of room to do their business uh, the riders got their little bit of corner in the back where they can uh, go sit they can hang their helmets up and do their thing and uh, go out on the racetrack and what a perfect racetrack Vlasov has been for these riders tonight here at Ty Wolfenden's uh, 10 year celebration and there's going to be a big party afterwards I'm going to be able to hang out with all these guys I'm looking forward to that one that could be a long and interesting night that's for sure <laughs> Uh, but bearing in mind that we do have to fly back to the UK at a very, very sensible time tomorrow morning. <laughs> but maybe some you might fancy a weekend away. We will um, we'll try and catch up with somebody else in the pits in a moment. A reminder of the standings. Dan Bewley, three rides, three wins, nine points, looking good. Robert Lambert with eight. Smarslik, uh, Holder and Vashlik all on seven. And the reminder once again, the top four after 20 heats, after they've all completed five rides, the uh, top four go through to the grand final. So we are guaranteed a big shootout at the end here in Roslav in what is now sunny conditions with blue sky overhead after that uh, rain shower early in the evening threatened to uh, cause a few issues and we uh, send our regards once again to uh, Gleb Chuganov and indeed Matthias Nielsen uh, for after the crash they suffered in heat 12 which will see them ruled out of the remainder of the meeting and certainly Chuganov uh, was some concern and uh, certainly some, some checkups required I think in hospital after that. Lots going on around the stadium whilst we have the grading break. Uh, there's uh, lots of kids running around the, the outskirts. There's uh, been lots of uh, giveaways, etc., etc., throughout the evening. Very much a family occasion here in Roslav tonight with uh, everyone getting involved and uh, the crowd enjoying what they're seeing and the riders just uh, checking out the track conditions. Uh, Patrick Dudek uh, looking on, Martin Vashlik uh, as well. Dudek after a last place in his uh, first ride has picked up five from his next two and um, Martin Vashlik also going uh, going to try and make that grand final with seven points we'll try and uh, catch up with Sam who looks like he's heading up towards the uh, the rider country so uh, he'll be uh, joining us very shortly but what a wonderful sight this circuit is the track now being watered after the rain earlier and a fantastic setting here at the Olympic Stadium in uh, Roslav real great setting great uh, traditional speedway circuit and uh, a big crowd look at that the grandstand almost full for Ty Wuffenden's testimonial meeting so much uh, has gone into the the planning the backing the sponsors the support everybody involved and they've all played their part in making this into a, a successful event track grading and track watering is continuing uh, and uh, Sam in the meantime has caught up with a very familiar face in Speedway and that's Monster Joe go for it Sam got Monster Joe right alongside of me buddy that's how I know your name's Joe Parson hey. but you come from my homeland in Southern California what an event and you've been a big part of it I'm sure you know it's uh, it's a beautiful event you don't in this sport, especially in Poland, you don't see any single rider stay with a club that long. You know, the clubs are so competitive. So to see a rider, and especially, you know, Ty, to be here one club, 10 years, it shows how 
organized this club really is to retain a rider for that long in this sport. That's such a good, valid point. I actually didn't think of it that way because you're right. I started off, did a couple years and so forth. For Ty to be here for 10 years and his loyalty to his fans and your loyalty monsters back in with uh, Ty Wolfdom. I see the blog. I see you guys' presence everywhere. That must be really exciting to be a part of somebody's career like that. Yeah. Ty is a... Uh He's special, you know, he's he's very smart in business, he's smart in marketing, he's an incredible writer as we all know, but he's always thinking, what can I do more, not just for himself or his team or his sponsors, but all of these people. He's here for them. I mean, you see that sign up there, many writers have been here, but you're one of us. That speaks volumes, you know, he doesn't, he's not Polish, he's from a different country and they've accepted him as one of theirs. That's, that's, doesn't get any better than that. Very well put, Joe. So your involvement now for the rest of the season within uh, Ty Wolfenden and all the monster riders, I've taken that still pretty straightforward. Yeah, you know, our riders, um, it's not about a sponsorship. It's a, it's a family, it's a brotherhood. And uh, all of our riders have different personalities. So the marketability isn't necessarily about the guy that just wins. You know, you, you have an influencer in a sport or, or a scene, and those are our riders. They're the influencers within this sport. They don't have to win races. They just need to do what they do and be themselves, and the fans love that. Lo lovely words there. And one more thing. Was he tempting you to get up in the sky plane and jump out? You know, it's always nice to see uh, them come in. It's nice to be on the ground. This is probably the first event I've been to where I'm not really here working, working. Of course, we have a job to do, but I'm actually, I'm actually as a fan, I'm here. So I wanted to see the boys land. Keep it going, bud. Thank you so much. And uh, hey, all the Speedway fans, thank you. Good stuff. Thanks, Sam. Thanks to Monster Joe Parsons uh, for so much into the sport over quite a long time now as we get set for heat number 13. Reclama Svetlana are the sponsors of heat number 13. And uh, Mateusz Panic, the uh, reserve, will ride in red as a replacement for Gleb Chuganov. Freddy Lindgren goes in blue, Martin Vashlik rides in white, and Mikhail Sersitek rides in yellow. So there is uh, Martin Vashlik, who's picked up seven points from his first three rides tonight, so very much in the equation. We're looking for places in the uh, in the top four. And Mr. Ermolenko, after his little pit tour, there is back with me, Sam. Looking forward to heat 13. Panic, Lindgren, Vashlik, and Sersitek. Wow, pretty good lineup right there. Martin Vashlik's having a, a pretty steady thing. Freddy Lindgren I think would probably want to pick it up a little bit more whether he's still testing some of the stuff I'm not so sure but these two will be battling I'm pretty pretty positive about that one look at Lingren's gone um, uh, four points so far yeah Freddy. that's it four points from three of course he was in the wrong place at the wrong time against Ty Wolfenden earlier in the meeting so uh, see if he can hit back here in the blue helmet colour Panic off the inside Lingren gate two Vashlik gate three certainly take on the outside this is uh, heat number 13 four rides on the night for all the competitors a long hold on the tape so away they go and it's a good start by Panic the reserve gets it from the inside could be some drama here because Lingwin in blue is going to be blocked out. He'll turn back to the inside into the third bend round the outside. In white goes Martin Vashlik. So far, Mateusz Panic has the advantage. And uh, this is a major upset here in heat 13 with Freddie Lingwin trying to set one down the inside. And Michael Sertitek coming through on Martin Vashlik. And uh, Mateusz Panic still leads here. Wow. He's got himself out in front right there. He's not going to give that up right now, too. He sits over the top of the bike a lot more than the other guy. Freddie's just coming up the inside. They're kind of babysitting him through the corners. He's probably going to make his move now, going up high. If he gets his wheels in line right now, he might generate some speed. Freddie Lincoln trying all he can here. And around the outside goes back. Luke is going to the scrap with Sersi Tech. Now for Lincoln will turn back off Ben four. And this time they'll get the move done as they start the last lap. Lincoln takes the advantage. Still racing away for, for third place because Martin Vashlik has been uh, done by Sersi Tech once more. They'll race up the back straights for the final time. Lindgren's had to work hard for it in heat 13, but he is going to come through and win it ahead of Panic. Lindgren wins it. Panic in second place, and the third will go to Mikhail Sozitek over Martin Vashlik. That's a surprise there in heat 13 as the Rothlard youngsters really get stuck into some of the upper Grand Prix stars. Lindgren does come through in the end at the end of uh, lap three to make it through on the inside, but uh, Vashlik could find no way through, and a good ride by Matthias Panic who made a tidy start from the inside gate, held a good line and really made Lindgren work hard there for that victory. The uh, experience and the class of Lindgren did tow in the end. Lindgren came through to win it. Panic in second place, Sersi Tech third and Martin Vashlik missing out there.
Yeah, those are just numbers on the on the chart right now. We gotta we gotta reflect on the fact that a lot of these riders want to go out there and perform, and it's their opportunity to test some things out right there. So I think that's uh, probably a little bit of the reason why maybe they were just holding back a little bit. They're just getting a feel of what they got riding underneath them there, but uh, still a good effort there from uh, Panic to get himself in off that inside gate to get out in front right there. Freddie was trying to look and to see whether I go to the inside or outside. You can see him kind of just hold back the bike a bit right there, you know, so it'll be interesting to have more with him later, see if he's been doing some uh, changes with this bike, but still a good race, and uh, Vashnik being right in the back there wasn't going to be happy with that result either. For the two or three times there that Freddie, if this was a Grand Prix or a big extra league meeting, might have really Threw one down the inside a bit, a bit, you know, a little bit more caution here in this kind of meeting. Absolutely, you're just going to go out there, have a little bit of fun, test your abilities with your equipment, see what's going to happen. But still, the leaderboard right now is still with uh, Dan Bewley at the top. Yeah, because Vasilik there not adding to his score, seven points before heat 13, and still with seven points now. With uh, Lindgren moving on to that mark after four rides, but Bewley, Lambert, and Smarzik they lead the standings. Bewley is unbeaten, and Bewley is in heat 14, and Bewley is against Smarzik in heat 14, and Chris Aldrin go as well with Jamin Lindsay, a man who you just spoke to moments ago, Sam, in red. So good line up here in prospect. He number 14 with Garcharek, the uh, sponsors, and it's Lindsay, Bewley, Smartwick, and Holder. Yeah, and that inside gate's been producing some race wins too, so uh, Lindsay might just be in the opportunity to get out there and show uh, what he's all about. And Ty Wilson's getting ready for his next race. You know, you know, this stadium's been here since 1920. They were built in 1926 yeah. to 1928. And um, for the first few years there, at one time it was uh, occupied by the Nazis. And uh, they had some football going on here more than Speedway. <laughs> Indeed, that's the history as uh, they get ready for Heat 14. Lindsay, Newley, Marvick, and Holder across the top line for heat number 14. Can Bewley keep his winning run going? He's up against Marvick, but it's uh, Lindsay who's made the start there in red off the inside gate, and Bewley has outgated Bartosz Marzik. Holder trying to come through on the inside, and Holder, can he get past Marzik? who goes back round him into the third bend, but Lindsay here has the lead, and let's see what Dan Bewley can do from the back against Jamin Lindsay. Tries to move inside him there on turns one and two. Can Dan Bewley make it through? That's a classy move by Dan Bewley. Gets inside Jamin Lindsay. Superb stop by Dan Bewley. Wow, keeping the good form going, Mr. Bewley out there and does it in class right there. Lizzie was really trying to hold on to that uh, lead he had there, but uh, Dan Bewley in current form going for them. But guess who they're beating uh, in third place right there, so what's going on there? Yeah, Bartosz Schmalzik in third place and not making any great impression on the two out in front, and neither is Chris Holder. So the boys who were uh, challenging the top two uh, are all running uh, pretty uh, third or last places in these races as uh, Bewley just picks up some drive there off the second member, controls it to lead lead Lindsay into the final turn, it's Marzik in third holder out the back and that's four out of four for Dan Bewley who wins team 14 over Chamberlain Lindsay with Bartosz Marzik in third place and Bewley moves on to 12, we'll be seeing him in tonight's final, there's no question about that, Dan Bewley has been absolutely sensational this evening so far, Damon Lindsay made the start there in heat 14 but Dan Bewley worked it out on the inside, the start of uh, lap two came through, very Classy move, textbook move from Dan Bewley in Heat 14 to take his fourth win of the meeting. Bewley superb so far, he wins it. Second place, Jamin Lindsay, and third place, Bartosz Marzlik. Jamin Lindsay from the, from the gate uh, makes a good start, gets himself out in front, keeps it. Uh, keeps, them, keeps everybody else on their toes here to get this one uh, done there. Dan Bewley. Hasn't been beat so far all evening time. Gets in there, gets it down low there. The bike is pretty aggressively set up. It's grabbing a little bit of traction here and there, but uh, he rode it very well to gain the lead in this uh, heat number 14 to get himself out there to add to a scoreboard. And that's a perfect score so far. Absolutely, perfect score, 12, 12 points. Possible 12 points secured, and as I say, we will be seeing Dooley towards the uh, the back end of the meeting. The debrief is taking place. There can't be a lot to debrief because it's all going well. <laughs> the smiles are on his face right there, so I'm sure Greg's just saying, "Yeah, you did all that." That's what he's always saying. No, no, that was you. I'm just there assisting you a little bit. <laughs> he's just in that sweet spot, Dan Beauty, where things are going well. Yeah, and I guess. When, it, when they are going well like that, it, it becomes easier. Um, you feel like when you go out on the track every time, you're going to win. Yeah, your confidence is up. You know, he's got his, his ability right now, is, is par with all the other guys. He knows the racetrack. 
so you can go out there and enjoy some success. And, uh, you know, what better place to do it on a benefit meeting? And then we're looking at Ty Wilson there in the pitchers right there and concentrating his bike. He got his bike going good the last time. It wasn't a part of the commentary then. And, and Hancock, Hancock was in here at that time. But, yeah. man, did he go good. So yeah. let's see what he can bring to the table in this race. Yeah, and, and a win here, as he goes off the outside uh, gate, uh, a win here would uh, certainly put himself in contention, bearing in mind the riders above him that have uh, not uh, been scoring too well in the last few races. So Francis goes off the inside, Jonas Jefferson goes off gate two, Wolfenden will be off the outside gate in yellow for this heat number 15, which is sponsored by Entrack. Entrack are our sponsors of heat number 14. Here we go with the action in heat number 15. So uh, Ty Wuffenden pulling them back. Movement at the start. Mateus Panic back on track there in white. And the red lights come on and we'll await the referee's verdict on that. Wuffenden certainly made a move there on the outside. He did. Whether he touched the tapes or not, we'll only find out in a minute. Here we go, the replay. He does get a little bit nervous. No touching, no, but he moves. Okay. Well, the rider in white, uh, Mateus Panic ends up in the tapes. Here we go. Oh, off of uh, Ty's movement, yes. Whenever the riders uh, are looking to the right or the left, when they're in the center positions of being in two or three, um, they do get um, guided by the rider inside of them's reaction. So uh, it is a testimonial meeting, and I'm sure Ty will not let this go without all four riders being back in this uh, race. I'm sure. Well, there was no light shining from the referee yeah, at the just moment. Yeah, restarted. Um, it, was a, it was a messy start, and... Um, Unfortunate for, for Panic, who rode really well in his previous ride. It would be very unlucky if he were to be ruled out. The two-minute warning is uh, is back on anyway. And we'll see if we do get uh, four riders back to the start line. Here he is. And uh, from uh, from that uh, indication, we suggest that... Um, should I go tell him to get back out there? I can I do that. I mean, you, sh you should go and uh, either tell him or tell the referee. <laughs> Come on, the referee. Take. You can take care of the four cameramen or five cam uh, <laughs> cameramen on the inside, but let the speed riders do the thing. Absolutely, yes. So here we go for the restart of 15. Uh, we didn't see an exclusion light on, but um, I rather fear that uh, the referee has uh, done it by the book and uh, excluded Matthias Panic. There is Paul Wolfenden. Back on the circuit in yellow for the restart. As I mentioned before, if he uh, if he wins this race, he's certainly favoured to do so, then he'd move on to uh, nine points, and that would put him uh, very much in contention uh, to make the final. Certainly up with the likes of, or ahead of the likes of uh, Marzik and Holder and uh, Vashlik, who all dropped points in their previous rides. So it's going to get quite close towards the end. Oh. It's uh, Gust who rides in red, Jefferson in blue, it's Panic in white who's excluded, and uh, Wuffenden who is in yellow. So uh, Matthias Panic in white, uh, but uh, unable to compete after touching the tape there in heat number 15. Wuffenden off the outside gate with uh, a total of six points so far. Can he make it nine here in his heat number 15? Restart, Gust off the inside, Jefferson too. Wuffenden comes away from uh, gate four, hasn't made the gate. Francis Gust has made the gate. The young Latvian has the advantage, and Wolfenden in second place, going to have to now do it from the back. He tries to move it down the inside. Just as we've seen before, when he uh, gets himself out in front, can be a tough lad to pass. And uh, Ty Wolfenden will need now all his track craft off the Rossmann circuit to find a way past Francis Gust. Yeah, he's going to have to be very wheel perfect, his tie here, not to make a mistake. See how close he came underneath uh, the rider there at one stage right there. So he really must just be a bit, a bit safe here. And he's up on the outside line right now, which will be his best and easiest run. He's going to cut back on the inside. He's going to dive up the inside. Nice and easy. There you go. The old oh, will up the inside, but he has yeah. to bail out there. Big crash, Ty Wolfenden. Big crash indeed. Dive down the inside, but just picked up at the vital moment. He's trying to clear the track, would you believe? <laughs> Unbelievable. I think sport. they're going to have to put the reds on. Oh, Look the at the damage he's done as well. Second hand oh, in the big dear. way. Yeah, well, you know, thank goodness it's okay. Yeah, I'm gonna. We're gonna focus on this in a minute. <laughs> the crowds love it. There you go. Oh, they're all going aw. Oh. But he tried, didn't he? He certainly did. He, he set put the big one through <laughs> on the inside. Uh, but then I think he, I think when we see the replay, he just lifted. Yep. Um, I guarantee he'll be here in a second. He'll yeah, probably come to watch straight it, over he? here. <laughs> oh, pretty liquor in there as well. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> so uh, we look forward to seeing it again. 
the uh, the yellow light is on. Ty Wolfram looks is excluded. Look at, Look at the, the damage he's done. State of that. Get your microphone ready, Sam. We'll, uh, we'll, we're going to need some <laughs> well, he's gone to this pit. one. He's gone to his pit for so yeah. many minutes to get over there. Absolutely. Um, I'll <laughs> let you do that job. But here, here we go. He tries the inside move here. Yeah, what he did was I think he relaxed a little bit when he came in here. Just sat back a little bit and the bike got away from him. You know what I mean? So best thing to do is exit. Stage left. Exit the thing. Get rid of it. Uh, be safe. Bounce himself off. Yeah, that, that's nothing. Yeah, that's no, that's nothing really for him. He can just get out there and jump out of airplanes. That's an easy fall for him. Absolutely yeah. spectacular. I'll, I'll let you go, Sam. Uh, to try and see if we can get some reaction. Uh, but you just see spectacular images there as he lifts and goes right across there on Francis Gouis. And he uh, gets off the bike, I think, just in time as well. And then has the presence of mind to try, to try and uh, clear the track as well. Sam, what have you got for us? Wow, that was pretty good. I said, you know what? My opinion of it is, tell me if I'm right or wrong. Looks like you just relaxed a little bit when you came in that corner. Uh, I just turned it hard, and um, as I turned, I just hit her, hit her right, and she, she went, she took off. Yeah, she took off. Yeah, okay. Well, well, you, you know, it looked like maybe you're just taking it easy on the guy in front of you, yeah. going to give her some time, and then you know, and just ride in there, and the bike got away from you, and you skid, and I would say. An 8 out of 10, was it easier to jump out of a plane or land that one right there? Easier to jump out of a plane for sure, but uh, we were talking about the setup before and he said, oh, I feel pretty fast, but these guys are better. And then I was like, it's in my next race, I can't let him beat me. Uh, yeah, no, it's all good fun. Yeah, everybody's having a great time and it's good that you came out of that one okay. We knew you let it go at the right time and you came out of that one safe, but still it's all going good. The crowd was on your side when you tried to pull the bike off being the best sportsman out there. I hate it when people lay on the track. Yeah, okay. I think you should only lay down if you hurt. And I hit the fence and was like, whoa, nah, I'm all good. And tried to get the bike off, but the forks were so bent. And then I slipped on my steel shoe. The bike's a little second hand now. Yeah, that's why we've got fucking six of them. <laughs> good one. Up and okay <laughs> after that uh, spectacular spill there in the restart of Heat 15. Good to see him walking away. Uh, and there was, uh, um, you won't be surprised to know, a lot of interest from the other riders to uh, find out exactly what went on there in that uh, Heat number 15. Ty's having a look now, and um, it would be a rerun of Heat 15 with, uh, with two riders on him. We're going to take a look at it once again, hopefully, uh, to show you again what went on. And here we go. Here's the, uh, here's the incident. So, uh, so take a look, boys, here they go, as uh, he puts it down the inside. Gus is there, and he just lifts. Off it goes, pretty heavy into the fence, and um, but then straight up on his feet. Doesn't like to see riders stay down, trying to clear the track, and uh, and there we go. Sam's going to get some uh, reaction, I think, from uh, from elsewhere, as everyone's uh, watching. And uh, Sam, you got, uh, you got Robert with you there, Sam. <laughs> so you watched that first hand then, what do you think? Same same opinion? Yeah, yeah, just came into the corner, turned it, and she launched on the rut. But Is there a rut out there? Yeah, there's ruts everywhere on this place. Not crazy ruts, not like Germany, but... Um, yeah, it's just... They're like long, mellow ruts. And I just sat in that one perfect. So sometimes traction ruts? They're definitely traction ruts when you hit them right. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Anyway, it was good to see that you got up okay. We just to watch it in there, and it was awesome. Cheers, mate. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Ty. So we're left with two riders only for the rerun, or the re rerun of heat number 15, with uh, Francis Gust and Jonas Jeppesen. So um, it's uh, it's all go here. And uh, Sam, Sam, you've rejoined me. Well done. Thank, thank you for that. Thank you, thank you. I'm um, back, I'm back. You've, you've covered more miles today than I think <laughs> when you were riding. It's uh, very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we're going to try again here. Francis Gust and Eunice Jefferson for the uh, third go at uh, Heat 15. As the two riders come into the line. Here is Gust, who is very much a, uh, a, a young star of the future, one to watch out for. And uh, wouldn't be surprised to see him at a higher level next season. Um, as we say, gaining experience with Poznan this year, but uh, may well move up next year. Eunice Jefferson there in blue has been uh, steadily picking up points for uh, Chester Hobart this season there in the, the playoff race. It's a really, really uh, tight playoff race as well in the extra league up. Really any, uh, any six of seven could make it. And, uh, 
Gust on the inside. Yepperson gate two. Two riders excluded. So we have a match race here, Sam, with Gust on the inside. Um, so pick your lucky one. Who's going to win this one, Mr. Dave? And Francis Gust is out in front when he uh, when that incident happened. So I think he would uh, expect From to make it again inside, here. Let's watch what happens here. So two at the line for heat 15. As we go once again. Gust inside. Yepperson gate two. Away they go, and the rider in red does indeed make the gate. Francis uh, Gus over Jonas Jeppesen, who tries to move around the outside of the second bend. But Francis Gus has the advantage here. As I say, uh, young Latvian, who uh, we saw riding in the under 21s last year and making a real impression, has got a big career ahead of him. And he has now pulled out uh, clear daylight over Jonas Jeppesen on the first lap or so. Uh, Francis Gus out in front here and looking good. Yeah, he's uh, he's riding the bike very very well. He's uh, he looks like he's an upright kind of rider on it. And uh, Ty was mentioning there that there's a there's little ruts all the way around this racetrack, and you can use them to your advantage if you can just find them. As long as you're pointing the right way, they'll help you accelerate away from the com opponents that are chasing you down. And he's got a huge lead at this stage. Yep, things looking good indeed for uh, Francis Goose, who came second in the GP2 opener. Uh, in Prague a few weeks ago as well, so he's chasing that title as well. Uh, finished behind Matej Scherniak, who came through on the last lap of that race, but so Gus picks up big points in that meeting, and he picks up big points too in heat 15 by winning it at the third time of asking uh, ahead of uh, Jonas Jeppesen, and uh, Gus uh, moves on to four points from four rides. It won't make him uh, a place in the final tonight, but it does get him a red victory on the board uh, in a... Uh, Big uh, meeting, a big open meeting competition. A good ride by Francis Gustav to beat Eunice Jefferson in Heat 15. Yeah, pretty straightforward, really, for uh, Francis Gust to be able to come out of that inside uh, gate position. A couple goes at it from there he's had and was able to finish the deal by just completing the four laps in, uh, in a pretty good form, actually. Yep, Francis Gust on to four points from four rides and uh, Jonas Jeppesen uh, has now got six from four so it's not totally out of the equation when it comes to top four on the night um, he uh, if he was to win his last ride then he could be uh, very much in with a chance um, so it will be interesting to see if that happens uh, so Gus confirmed as the winner with Jeppesen second in heat 15 the riders are already trackside for heat 16 and this one is sponsored by uh, Betard and it will feature Matsa Janowski, who uh, is somewhere down the order with five points from three, but a win here would certainly help his cause. Janowski on the inside, two deck off gate two. There is Kowalski who goes off the outside, and Robert Lambert will complete the lineup. Lambert dropping his first point of the meeting at the expense of Bewley in that long running heat 12. So Kevin Lambert get back on the winning board here in heat 16. Janowski on the inside, Dudek on gate two, Lambert on gate three, and Kowalski off the outside gate. Yeah, with Dudek coming off a race win, many, many races ago now. He's had a bit of a break, and uh, we'll see what he's going to do from that gate number two. But uh, Robert Lambert coming from gate number three would like to uh, continue his good form this evening, only being beaten by uh, his fellow countrymen, uh, Dan Abuli, in that one race where they restarted that one twice as well. So uh, here we go, heat number 16, a big race for, uh, when it comes down to the points of these two guys. Matsenovsky in red, uh, trying to find a new starting point there on the inside gate. Dudek, who's uh, improved after a last place in his first ride. He's got uh, five from three, so a win here would help his scores as well. Janowski, Dudek, Lambert and Kowalski for this heat number 16. And away they go, and Janowski lifts off the inside. That might so give a chance for Dudek in blue to go around him, and it does. Dudek gets it, then he lifts off the second bend. So what can Kowalski do? Because uh, Lambert's been squeezed out in white. Lambert at the back at the moment, trying to make his way through from the back. But it's uh, Patrick Dudek here who leads from Martin Kowalski with Janowski in third place. But uh, Lambert will turn back now for the inside, trying to get back past uh, Matzo Janowski. But uh, Dudek could be the big winner here with Lambert at the back. Yeah, Dudek, perfect start right there. Didn't make it uh, look too easy, really. He's trying to stay out in front of these guys just there. But that was a very surprising that uh, Magic Janowski isn't really getting up in the front of these things and trying to go for the big prizes. He's struggling just to stay in the uh, third place. Yeah, he's battling with Robert Lumber, who almost got inside him. He's obviously got back around him. It's uh, Kowalski who's holding the second place, but now he's only scored one point before uh, this particular race. Patrick Dudek is, uh, is uh, clear out in front. 
with uh, going to move on to eight points with this one. Dudeku leads. Lambert still putting the challenge in on Yonoski on the final turn. It's Dudeku wins it over Kowalski. And Yonoski hangs on for third place there over Robert Lambert. So a surprise last place there for Lambert. And it's going to be a very tight battle indeed for the places for the top four as a result. Behind Dan Bury, that is because he is absolutely clear at the front of this meeting but we've seen uh, plenty of drop points uh, in the uh, in the recent past and it's uh, leaving Dan Bewley four points in front on top of the standings so Bewley in the final Dudek wins it and he's actually now second in the standings uh, Dudek wins it from Kowalski with Dinovsky in third place and uh, Robert Lambert at the back and uh, that was uh, Dudek's second successive victory and uh, he is well, now one of three riders on eight points, and here we go, Sam. Yeah, yeah, Dudek lifted quite hard. I mean, I know that Janowski did as well, but uh, Janowski's fight didn't really go forward as much as uh, Dudek's did, and Dudek got outside, got out in front, and he started uh, concentrating on pulling away from there, and he made it look um, quite easy there for the bit there, but Robert Lambert was trying to hold on to his position too, and you can just see Janowski there um, going on the outside, got a cleaner run and was at a smoother ride to be able to get over the top of the British rider there to get himself into uh, third place, and that's just minor points there. But Patrick Dudek, again, coming up here watching the monitor to see if he get any secrets out of that one as we just watch him win that one. Well, it's now anybody's guess who'll make the final this evening uh, because uh, Dan Bewley is the clear meeting leader with uh, 12 points from four rides, but look at what's happening behind. Dudek on eight, Lambert on eight, Smarzik on eight, but then Holder, Vashlik and Lindgren all on seven. Jefferson, Wuffenden and Linovsky all on six. We're looking for the top four to make the final this evening, and so you can go well down that list and find several who are still in contention, and uh, therefore several who are currently in that top four who, uh, who may in the end uh, miss out. So uh, pretty interesting stuff indeed. Uh, at this stage um, and we'll, they've all got one ride to come and uh, we will see exactly uh, what goes on in that last ride top four to make the final in the meantime the man who's won two on the bounce now second joint second overall let's join Sam with Patrick Dudek hi Patrick how are you the last two races three points three points going good for you uh, yes uh, the first hit I had a little bit problem with the setup and we tried the new wheels today and it's much better. When we race more heats, it's uh, better, better. And now a little bit sleep on the, tr the start, but later was okay. Same like in Tetero. And what's it like w racing this race for Ty Wolfenden? I am very happy because uh, I remember when I uh, raced with Ty in, uh, uh, in Sweden. Uh, in Dakar na Molila and I was not best rider but now is three times world champion so uh, good to race here we have many people so everything looks good yeah, it's really good to see you out there winning races from starting so slow but uh, very good keep up the good work thank you very much and so see you later Cheers Sam, thank you Patrick for uh, that one and he is uh, really in this meeting now, he's got one ride to come and that is uh, Heat 19, it's a good one, he's up against uh, Jeppesen, Lindgren and Bewley in Heat 19 so uh, no gimmies there, no guarantees but uh, he's having a chat there with uh, Bartosz Marzik and uh, Dudek really did turn his season round with his uh, win in Tetro when he picked up uh, the full 20 Grand Prix points. The crowd are being entertained by the latest uh, attraction whilst the track rating is uh, taking, uh, taking place here ahead of the final race uh, for each of the competitors of the regular meeting, uh, heats 17 to 20 and uh, the tractors on the circuit and uh, yeah uh, Patrick Dudek who scored five points from the first three Grand Prix each of them together uh, five five and five uh, then uh, really uh, scored 20 in one go in Tetra when he really did uh, brave that difficult circuit and uh, rode really impressively to win that meeting and of course Bartosz Marzek picked up good points with second place in the meantime let's go down to the pits because Sam is with fast Freddy Lindgren I love you still smiling, yeah. still smiling, still going for it. Yeah, I know. Uh, we've been testing some stuff today. Been good and be, been bad, but uh, we still have a shot, I think, for the final. So we one more race to go and hopefully make a heat win and maybe, maybe go to the final. So, so you know, you're coming out of Gate Blue uh, in the last one, I think, yeah. and is it going 
and and now you just won that one. So, what is the best gates, or is there best gates at the moment? I reckon you know the inside has looked the best so far, but uh, Duda just made a fire of two, so it's possible, right? Yeah. And uh, you said that you've been doing some testing. Are you done testing now? You got it settled down that you can maybe go win the final? Uh, we we go with what we got, and uh, we we'll see how it goes. So you're gonna tell us? I know a little bit about what you've been testing, but are you gonna tell the world? Yeah, I know way, man. <laughs> I love it, Freddie. Keep it going, bud. Thank you, thank you. Freddie Lindgren is experienced enough in this game to not give away the secrets of what he is uh, working on. Um, he actually rode as a teammate of Wolfenden here at Rothlab back in 2012 before he uh, moved on to Legno and eventually to his current club of uh, Chester Hover. Um, but uh, Freddie Lindgren's uh, Grand Prix debut was back in 2004, would you believe? Very much uh, experienced uh, man. Uh, fast Freddy and as I say he's not going to give too much away um, at this uh, stage of proceedings so uh, good to hear from him there and he, as he mentioned he's in with the shout he's on uh, seven points from uh, four rides and the way it's uh, the way the meeting has uh, turned in the last uh, heat we saw uh, Lambert, Smarzlik, Holder and Vashlik all failed to score big points in their uh, in their previous rides so um, that, that really did um, open things up for the other Sam and as uh, Freddie was saying there he's on seven but he's actually got the chance now to make the final yeah I mean it's one of those things where where's he, laying, where's he sitting on now Sorry, seven I points that yeah so three rides on eight behind Bewley on 12 yep. and then those, those clutch reminders on seven that uh, could still make it yeah so there's, there's still hopefully fingers crossed for the guys I mean that's what this this event's all about you know to, to, to get out there and enjoy the racing at the same time put on a good show do a little testing and if there's a prize at the end which we still haven't been clarified if there's that 5,000 pound dollars slotties or what at the end of it all but they got Oakley glasses and think earlier and seen some other stuff but the boys want to go out there and win win the races for sure I think you better get your, your wet weather gear back ready again because it's just starting to rain again oh, no not <laughs> are you again go away so, so hopefully it won't uh, it won't come down to too much but um, yeah good to see everyone enjoying themselves today and obviously we had the unfortunate crash in here 12 we hope that the boys are okay from from that one but there's been some some drama and some excitement along the way and I think most people have I think everyone who's, who's come to watch the show would have enjoyed the show absolutely i mean it's uh, how could you not enjoy it the atmosphere is so so good here all the people the racing's going on and you say the action of uh, crashes we don't want to see the crashes sometimes spills are good but you know at the, at the end of the day it's all about everybody going away safe uh, but the fans are really enjoying it the mechanics have had to work pretty hard to keep the bikes going especially magic janowski there he's not really got anything that's going really good here so it'd be interesting to know if he would tell me a story or not but at the moment um, he's not putting on the big points. Well, well, they won't be happy, will they? I mean, Magic's a class rider, we know that. And they have important matches coming up. They go to Gorjov on Sunday. And testimonial or no testimonial, you want to show up and perform on your home track, don't you? And um, here we're disappointed to find himself on six points and not winning a race, which is unusual. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, you know, I don't really know. He's not come out. He's been one of the riders that's been very difficult to uh, nail down here this evening to get an interview. One interview with him, it was just more or less we just caught up and he, and he was giving me hugs and kisses because I haven't seen him in a long while but um, you know if he's trying stuff testing stuff whatever but even you know the fun side about it is you can come to an event like this and you can go out and test and he did note that fact that I can go out there and ride my motorbike not under any pressure to uh, score the big points I'm not gonna let my team down I'm not letting myself down individually I can go out there maybe the team's got a strategy which they're planning things and they tested them and and i got to give him the benefit of the doubt that that's what's been going on. Yep, indeed. Well, let's see what he does in his uh, final ride with the changes that are being made. I think uh, we're not too far away from uh, getting... Uh Started with Heat 17. I'm just looking behind. I can see the bikes are beginning to be uh, lined up in the uh, in the entry zone. And uh, Heat 17 will include Bartosz Marzlik, who is on eight points from his uh, four rides and a win in this race would book his place in the final. We know that Bewley is in the final on 12, while well, Marzlik is on eight, uh, along with Dudek and Lambert. And as uh, Marzlik goes in Heat 17, um, Dudek goes in heat 19 and Lambert goes in heat 20. So they're yep. the riders in control of the situation. If they uh, get wins, then they will be in the final regardless of what the likes of Holder and Bashlik and Lindgren and co do in their last rides. Well, um, I think that heat 19 is a loaded race, isn't it? Because you got Dan Bewley in it along with Freddie Lindgren yeah, and yeah. you just got to mention Dudex in there as well. So, you know, Dudex, they all want points. Um, the one that's got the most points so far, obviously, we know is Dan Bewley. 
But, um, you know, Dudek is feeling in good form right now, coming off of two race wins. He's going to keep that one going. Freddie's, I think, possibly, we didn't get it out of him if he's done testing or not. But if he wins, he probably says he was testing. If he loses, he'll probably still say he was testing. It wasn't <laughs> Absolutely. Like he was. Here's a reminder of how things sound. So Beauty with 12 is definitely in the final, uh, and uh, we'll lead the st we lead, we'll lead the standings as well going into the final. And then Dudek, Lambert, and Smilesberg are all uh, in different races in the next uh, block of heats, and therefore wins for them, uh, each of them, if it happens, they would uh, complete the line final, the final lineup even uh, with uh, with Dan Beauty. But if they don't, if they drop points, that then opens the door for the boys behind. Here we go with heat number 17 with a sponsorship from Teng Tools. Remembering Lake Cohen North as well whenever we see Teng Tools at sporting events. Colin, a great man who suffered a tragic accident uh, some three years ago. But uh, great to see Teng Tools coming on their backing. Michael Serzitek rides in red. Bartosz Kowalski rides in blue. Bartosz Kowalski in white. Mateusz Panic, the reserve, coming in for Matthias Nielsen off the outside. So we've seen some strange results today. We've seen some riders drop points that you wouldn't expect. But Looking at this lineup across the board here, Sam, Bartosz Schmalz, that you would think, should, should be the stick-on favourite here to get those three points and make the final. Well, uh, if you ask him that question and you put him under pressure, he would say, yes, it is him. Gate two isn't bad, though, is it? It's going good. There's some um, late rate race wins from that one, and, and um, so he's sitting on a good position. Um, it, it won't. It should be pretty straightforward for him, you would say. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, it should be straightforward. So we'll, we'll, let's see if it uh, it works out in his favour. Uh, but it's these three riders, three of the up and coming riders here, up against him. Some of the uh, the Ross Lab youngsters. And uh, we've seen some uh, interesting uh, racing from them so far tonight. Now they're going to take on the double world champion Martin Schmidt. Yeah. Oh, would it be nice to be able to beat him, right? In front of it wouldn't crowd. matter testimonial or a league yeah. match or whatever if you can put that on your CV. Then you would do. So let's see. Let's see what we get on the uh, the first bend of the number 17. Martin's the man in blue. The other three will be getting a bunch of support from the crowd and as well as it gets some rough treatment too from Cersei Tech and the crowd loved it as well and as well as it will try and turn back up the inside and he'll give some back into Ben 3 and 4 as well as he does take the advantage there over uh, Cersei Tech with Kowalski in third they have trade elbows off the uh, fourth bend and they're still tight on turns 1 and 2 as well as they have the advantage and the Ox is really going out of here yeah they really race each other pretty hard going to those little bit of grooves right there are showing the bikes are getting a little bit twitchy on the racetrack I was really impressed with that's magic so anybody would be that he made it look so simple but I guarantee you it wasn't so simple going through those little grooves on the inside when he made that pass going into turn three at the first lap this will take Bartosz Marzak into the meeting final this evening with 11 points as his run continues for second and third still being held by uh, Mikhail Serzitek who has the second place over Bartek Kowalski in third but here's the style of uh, Bartosz Marzak out in front the Grand Prix series leader after four bouts they're still scuffling away for second it's a win for Martos Mars, keeping the final second place is Thursday Tech and uh, that to leaves Kowalski in third spot so you can ink him Bartosz Marzlik as a finalist along with Dan Bewley here this evening Marzlik goes through on the 11 point mark and we'll see what uh, Patrick Dudek and Robert Lambert do uh, in heats uh, 19 and 20, whether they can uh, join Bewley and Smilesick. So Smilesick, the winner of heat 17, Serzitek in second, really gave it a go there on the first lap or so. Kowalski in third, and Mateusz Panic out the back. Yeah, Mikhail Serzitek really did a, a, a good uh, start to be able to get himself into the first corner first, over the top of uh, he gave, a real shot gave there, Bartis a, a bit of a jump there, but Bartis was trying to turn left. I think it was unexpected right there, which gave him a little bit of room then, and the gap opened up for Bartis to come straight up the inside there. And you can see right here how precise Bartis was to make that uh, turns three and four stick as the boys battled on right behind him there. And uh, go up in there. They got a little bit tight there. It was a little bit uh, scary for me a little bit there, thinking, uh, you know, those guys are going through some of those little ruts right there. We don't want any incidents, but they held on to it. And this man came with the, the, the three points that was needed for him to make sure he gets himself into that final. Yep, so Bewley in the final, 12 points uh, from four rides. Still got 
want to come and smiles it there you see with 11 three wins and two thirds that's enough for him to be in the final as well on 11 we'll see Bartosz Marzik once more this evening heat number 18 is next up Matt Sajanowski uh, as we saw him making mechanical changes in the pits before uh, or during the track grade he's got six points so far uh, Jamin Lidsey will ride in blue he's got five uh, it uh, won't be Gleb Choganoff I'm assuming we're going to see the, the hard working Matthias Panic once again there has been a uh, bit of a delay before this race so I think they're giving him time to uh, to refuel and Francis Gust will go off the outside so uh, he of course won his last outing to go on to four so if Inoski was to win this he'd move on to nine it probably wouldn't be enough given the uh, the scoring elsewhere with the riders still to come but uh, I'm sure that uh, after what we've seen from Inoski he wants to try and uh, end his night with uh, a bit of confidence there's one man who's got loads of confidence uh, Dan Bewley just casually sitting there waiting for, for Heat to 19 and then the grand final yeah he's doing the right thing he's focusing on himself now he's going to know that he's going to go out there and uh, make sure that he doesn't make any mistakes because it's about him now um, he's got a race to wait before he's going to be on the track, but he's probably going to go watch and see what everybody's doing on this uh, heat number 18 coming yeah, up. Yeah, definitely going to want to watch, uh, see how the track is uh, developing. And then he's got to heat 19 to uh, to see how things are going. And then he'll have a choice to make uh, for the uh, the grand final. But uh, heat 18 comes first. Pomic are the sponsors, as you can see there. Again, thanks to all the sponsors for their uh, backing of such a high-profile testimonial event. And there is uh, Matt Sajanowski, who rides off the inside in red. Jamin Litsy uh, will ride in blue. And then uh, we expect reserve Matthias Panic in white once again. He's had a uh, busy night. And uh, Francis Gust going, uh, going in the yellow helmet colour. So uh, there is uh, there is Gust, Latvia. What is our prize? Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's not such a, he's a, he's a handy rider. I mean, coming, like you say, coming up from a race win, but we know what happened in that uh, race yeah. win incident there. But uh, is he going to be able to use that outside gate, which might be useful for him to get, it, get in there and uh, put some uh, thread on getting in there. Janowski comes in here and uh, from the inside. And it depends on what he's going to be doing. Because um, if he's got his bike sorted out, uh, Damien, Lindsay will be in a good position that gate number two seems to be getting the riders to the first corner pretty quick so we'll have to deal with the consequences of battling with these guys depending on if Francis Goose gets there from the outside looks pretty pretty confident that he might be able to do something from there but um, he's got those uh, three other riders on the left hand side of them that are going to race into that first corner. Yep again Goose will be keen to take a scalp if he can make it from the outside gate but what can Matsy Noski do from the inside James Lindsay there along with Panich is taking his fifth ride in nine races uh, here it's a good start by Janowski but here comes Gust from the outside he's made it what there a ride go. there by Francis Gust superb stuff there Do you think from the outside in yellow <laughs> Gust, <laughs> <was lucky>. yeah. <laughs> sorry Dave. yeah don't worry Gust has it over Janowski with Lindsay trying to pass Janowski for the, uh, the second place Janowski on one wheel he starts his second lap he's going wide Lindsay is pegging the inside on Janowski Francis Gust still has the advantage and there goes Lindsay in the second place yeah perfect start from that outside get down a little bit of dirt up there you got the right combo will pull you straight into the corner and it looks like an easy line up the high line right there the boys there coming up to the inside you see uh, Lindsay going up the inside it's a little bit ruffled out there see the bikes get a little twitchy as I mentioned earlier so you got to be a little bit careful Francis goes to he's looking to go back to back here but he's going to get a top one there from James oh, Lindsay who yeah. chopped his nose off there going in and Lindsay is going to be sent out wide on the second turn Yanoski is trying to come back in Lindsay is working inside and outside but he can't find a way past Francis Gust as they come off the final turn can he come along the inside it's Gust just he wins it over Lindsay good scrap there with Yanoski in third place and Francis Gust will finish with two wins and Mateusz Panic will finish with a wheelie after finishing last there in another ride there heat 18 but uh, Francis Gust really again announcing the talent he has uh, definitely one to watch in the years to come and will be chasing SGP2 honours in Cardiff and Torren later on this season Gus the winner of Heat 18 he had to work for it and he had to really be defensive at times against uh, Jamin Lidsey and the two of them got the better of Matze Janowski so Gus the winner impressive ride Lidsey second and Janowski in third what a start that was from gate 4 for that being youngster Francis Gust uh, had the right uh, place at the right time when he made that start from that outside gate because I believe that uh, 
Damon Lindsay was a little bit faster there. Celebration Willie right there for him going around the track, entertaining the fans here. It's exactly what the whole it's all about. Thing, that's what, yeah. yeah, there you go. The crowd the crowd love nuts. it. Can you do a whole lap? Oh, <laughs> of course. Just one but more time. <laughs> the crowd loved it, and, uh, and as I mentioned earlier, he is uh, on the Roslav uh, asset list. Um, I'm sure they'll see him in the future, but they're seeing him now. Look at this. Yeah, perfect start. Got himself in the front. Down the back straightaway, the bike hooked up and kept going. Yanofsky in red there, trying to see if he can pick the pieces up there, but just up the inside right there was the Australian pushing um, to get into position. And he had a lot of speed. As soon as he uh, got rid of Yanofsky, which was out there fishing on the high line right there, trying to get some extra grip, nothing there. It was just about, look how close they came together right there. I said Lindsay probably had a little bit uh, more speed than Goose did, but um, Goose was able to finish the deal by finishing the race in front at the end. So here's how things stand with uh, Dan Bewley on 12 and Smarzik on 11. They are through to the final. Dudek and Lambert and the men in control with eight points from four rides. If they win their last rides, they will be in the final. If they don't, then the likes of Holder, Vashnik and uh, Lindgren are the ones who could sneak in. And so Heat 19 could begin to sort things out. We have Eunice Jefferson riding in red on six points so far. Freddie Lindgren in blue. He's on seven. Dan Bewley goes in white unbeaten on 12. There he is. Uh, in yellow off the outside, Patrick Dudek on eight points from four right. You call it some strong racing number 19. Which way is it going to go? Yeah, this is it. This is where they're going to they're going to sort things out in this heat number 19. I'm sure with uh, Dudek riding really well now. This will be if he can complete the deal. This will be uh, three wins in a row. So he's kind of done the backwards way. Started off with zero second and then two wins and looking pretty confident. He's been watching, sharing this uh, studio with us. Looking at the monitor many times. But you got Frederick. Lingren coming out at about gate number two uh, will be desperate to make sure that he gets those three points out of the grab. Coming off a race win in his last heat number 13. Uh, Dan Bewley, we know what he's all about. He's won every race so far. And he's sitting there nice and pretty out of gate number three. And then throwing for good measure, throwing the Danish Jonas in there on the inside. So uh, it's, a, it's a hard one to call, but we know who wants this. And I think it'll be Lingren. I don't know if Bewley wants to get tangled up with these guys, but just for the just for the to seal the deal, it'd be nice for him to win this one. Lingro Heat 19 sponsored by Alfred Duck. Here we go. Jefferson, Lingro, Bewley, and Dudek. They go away. And Bewley's not made a good start. Lingro and House and Dudek's going around the outside of everyone. And Dudek's got the win. There goes Bewley turning back off Ben Two to shop. Jefferson out of the way. Lingro goes through into second. But this will do for Dudek here. Out in front as Dan Bewley tries to move through on the inside of Freddie Lingro. Can't get that one done. Jefferson missing out as he is sent wide again by Bewley. Bewley is set to drop his first point. That's no great concern. And Dudek leading here. He's hitting the final. Yeah, like I said, the two big boys that know what's going on this time in the event right there. But take that back. Bewley just sneaks up on the inside right there. And I tell you what, uh, Frederick was a little bit more forceful when he went down that straightaway a lap before that. Kind of turned left. But he's, he's suffering now right to the back. Yeah, Lindgren drops to the back. His chances are pretty much over. Bewley makes his way through into second. The Jefferson to third. But uh, Dudek could be the man to catch here after a last place in his first ride. He's really come on strong in the second half of the meeting. He is definitely one to watch when you look at the margin he has out in front. He flew off the outside gate. And Patrick Dudek is the winner of heat number 19 over Dan Bewley with Eunice Jefferson in third place. And it's the end as far as Lingren is concerned from this meeting. Bewley will finish on 14. Still hugely impressive, but uh, Dudek there lays down a marker in heat 19 and uh, moves on to 11 points uh, along with uh, Bartosz Smalzik. So we have Bewley in the final, we have Dudek in the final, we have Smalzik in the final, and heat number 20 will determine who is going through with them. There's the confirmation that Dudek is the winner of heat 19. Bewley in second place, Jefferson in third, Lindgren missing out. We have three in the final, and Patrick Dudek is the third man to go in but who will join those three as we look on ahead of heat 20 here's the action heat 19. When you got the big guns in this race I know that Dan Bewley is becoming ooh, a little bit amusing I didn't even see that in the beginning of when you first uh, seen this start there but Dudek from that outside gate lets the clutch out powers himself into the front of these guys and right there, Frederick Lingren in the blue helmet color was laying second going down the back straightaway. And Dan Bewley was sneaking up the inside right there and stole that second place right there. And right here I can say Frederick was turning left down the straightaway because he he wanted to hold on to this thing. Whether he's gone with his conventional setup or he's still testing something, 
He won't tell us that whenever I put the microphone underneath him to see what he was all about. But right there, I would say that uh, he was uh, bummed out that he didn't get that second place. So, Lindgren with seven out of contention. Dooley 14, Dudek 11, Smolzik 11 are all through. Lambert on eight, Gust on seven won't go through. Holder and Vashlik are both in heat 20, along with Robert Lambert and indeed Ty Wilfington. So, heat number 20 will sort things out. ATPI, the sponsors of the race, and we have Ty Wilfington riding in red with six points so far. Martin Vashlik goes in blue, he's on seven. Chris Holder goes in white, he's on seven. And Robert Lambert in yellow, he is on eight. And Lambert win takes him into the final if Lambert doesn't win and somebody else could force their way in here could be uh, he's got the outside gate will he be happy with that gate do you think uh? I would say so yeah it's a good place to be look where he's lining up he's kind of lined up in the middle of that uh, gate four box so he's not he's not up to the to the dirt side of it so he's often found some kind of something that's going to give him to well, let's hope he thinks he's found something but I would think he would be up a little bit higher but uh, he's on the track not me well, this should sort things out. Team 20 gets away. And will Lambert make it from the outside? Has made a good start. Wolfenden has made a good one too from the inside. It's Wolfenden with the advantage. Lambert lifting off the second bend. Will he go around Wolfenden into the third bend? It's Vashley concerned with hold up out the back. And can Robert Lambert make it around the outside? Of Ty Wolfenden here. Wolfenden defends, but uh, Lambert uh, gets it around the outside. I think Wolfenden fairly generous there on Robert Lambert at the start of lap two. Lambert out in front and clear. He's heading through. Yeah, I would say there's a little bit of uh, compassion there from. Uh, Ty giving him that little bit of room, but uh, Robert Lambert was in the right place. And, the, and as far as the racing line goes on the racetrack, just mid track where you can get a little bit of dirt, and the bike is pulling him away from the rest of the guys now. The second place would have been enough for Lambert, given the fact that Wolfenden uh, was taking points off the Bachelor and Holder anyway. But uh, Robert Lambert wasn't really to know that at the time. He was going around the outside, determined to make his way through. It's Wolfenden second for what will be his final ride of the meeting. I'm sure there's a huge reception coming for him as he comes into the final bend uh, of. Lambert the four, but Robert Lambert will be our fourth finalist of the evening. Lambert win T20 ahead of Wuffenden, and uh, it's uh, Robert Lambert who goes through. So all those riders who were on the eight-point mark, and they have made it through to the final by winning their last ride. Bewley, Dudek, Lambert and Smilesleck will be in tonight's final, and uh, Lambert there coming from the back because Ty Wuffenden did make the start, but uh, in the end, Lambert coming through. Wuffenden will finish on the eight point mark but he's now about to get the acclaim and the applause of the Rosslar crowd his testimonial meeting <laughs> and he now takes the applause of the crowd and they all stand the standing ovation for Ty Wuffenden as he completes his testimonial meeting <laughs> applause from Ty applause back from the crowd packed house here pretty much in Rosslar staged uh, many many big meetings down the years Stage the Speedway of Nations here four years ago. The attraction definitely was the excitement of Ty Wuffin and what's he going to do to get all these crowds here. And as he mentioned there, it's, it's not very often that when they have benefit meetings without any importance that the Polish fans come out to support it. But they've done a, a, a very good job of uh, bringing the numbers here to Wrocław this evening. Uh, we've had a mixed weather with uh, Ty a little bit concerned about that, him jumping in out of an airplane with all of his buddies that uh, he's up there jumping with. Uh, a good job for him to, to, to applaud the crowd. So Lambert wins the 20, Wuffenden was second, Martin Vashlik was third, and uh, Chris Holder was out of the back. And here we go, uh, some, more, uh, some more celebrations at the end. As uh, Ty comes onto the circuit, and uh, they're just uh, clarifying exactly what's going to happen next, I think. Another surprise. The crowd are cheering his name, chanting his name. As you can see, the uh, presenter is being, I think, being told what's going to happen here. Something like he'll ride, he'll ride the bike into the crowd or something like that is going to happen next. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we don't know, but the, the, uh, the centre green presenter is being briefed. Uh, he says, are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> All right, we're going to do it now. Come so on, Ty, we don't us. know. We had a running order. We knew what was happening before the meeting. <laughs> and we, we actually don't know what's about to happen now. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, your guess is as good as mine. Still there. Ty Wolfenden, the uh, testimonial man, the three-time World Speedway champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the laps. And. Uh, on one wheel. Uh, 
and the crowds were uh, chanting his name and they're going to get a uh, leading display. Joined the club in 2012, won three world titles in that time, won the extra league last year, they'd been trying to do it for year after year and almost well, fell short several times, did it last year which must have meant so much for them and uh, probably these laps that he's taking of the circuit they are almost like a release of the emotion of the last few, few weeks, sorting everything out for this meeting and uh, taking uh, taking the applause of the crowd because he's organised the whole show and uh, when I talk about the whole show we talk about the two or three hours outside the stadium beforehand where the place was absolutely rammed and uh, all the stuff that went on with it so so put, to, put together this whole production and to even even personally organise our trip to be fair you know he did everything it took to get everybody here and um, I think Greg noted it on that Ty likes to do things his way and yeah. get things done so uh, fair play to the guy um, and they're all appreciative of what he's done here and uh, he's out there still doing his laps and doing his wheelies and um, you, you can only imagine what's going through his head right now you know um, you know the years of uh, dedication to this club and, and the club dedicated to Ty it's a combination that's uh, brought a lot of success as you've mentioned already and uh, and many more to come he's still still got a lot in him probably riding the bike tonight was the easy part actually after all the uh, all the organizations so uh, i think uh, he's uh, going to take one more celebration yeah. we will uh, so let you know what's going on meanwhile with the draw for uh, gate positions okay. but they actually, they actually need the oh. red helmets <laughs> to do the draw would you believe oh, okay. uh, for the gate positions for the final yeah. so um We'll, we'll have to uh, wait for that um, because there's still fuel with the bike to do more wee with. Um, the uh, other boys who have made the final are, uh, are actually uh, waiting near to us to uh, make their uh, make their gate choices. We're going to be seeing, as we've mentioned, Bewley, Dudek, Lambert, and Smarslick in the final, but that's only when the <laughs> when the helmet colour comes back. <laughs> so uh, that's ending shortly. Chris Holder is just chatting there with uh, Bewley and Lambert and the tie is uh, back in the pits and uh, you'll see that um, we have the uh, the helmets uh, now on the desk there we go so there we are so that's it i think uh, sam's going to go and uh, take a look uh, for us when they don't make the uh, make the picks for the grand final of ty wolfenden's testimonial meeting where dan Bewley will have uh, first choice of gate having scored 14 points in the qualifying races he's uh, getting used to uh, finishing uh, towards the top of these meetings is uh, Dan Bewley really having a great run of form in uh, Grand Prix competition lately doing a great job Dan and uh, he will have uh, first choice uh, Bartosz wants the uh, the yellow helmet colour but he'll have to wait for that one I think I suspect he may find it's gone by the time uh, the picks are made Robert Lambert also taking a look uh, well now we're thoroughly confused um, because uh, okay the, the, the picks right the picks have been right we're now being told the picks have been made back to front so the rider with the um, so do that so the that, well, that, that's, that's that were absolutely we said there'd be something unusual tonight um, so the rider who uh, was top of the standings Poor old Dan Beauty who scored 14 points is left with the red helmet colour. So um, I, I, hope, I hope those boys knew that beforehand. Um, so Bartos was was actually happy enough to take. To be fair, Dan's running away happy enough with that. He's, he's grinning and laughing, and um, he's going to be left with the inside. And Bartos Marzik has, uh, has, uh, has managed to end up with the outside gate. So that was all uh, rather surprising um, and uh, not quite what we were expecting there. Um, so uh, some of you were down there. So some of you were down there at the. Yeah, we were a bit uh, a bit confused there because uh, traditionally the rider with the highest number of points tends to pick the gates first, but not you know, tonight. Maybe that was another surprise that uh, to make things a little bit more interesting right there. So they can, the riders can afford uh, to uh, slip up a little bit, and right there, it's kind of against tradition, but uh, we just witnessed it. We did. So Dan Bewley will now be going off the uh, off the inside gate, and uh, Bartosz Marzik will be going off the outside. And uh, you also saw, of course, uh, Patrick Dudek and, uh, and Robert Lambert. So, um, yeah, it's uh, been uh, it's been a night where we've had uh, a bit of everything, and um, who knows uh, what we're going to get uh, in the final with uh, one race to come with the top four on the night. 
Uli, Dudek, Lambert and Zmarzlik. Who will win the Time Wolfenden Nice to see two uh, Brits in the final. Absolutely. Yes, very, yeah. very much so. I mean, Ty Wolfenden uh, standing on the top there, uh, knowing that he's put this whole thing together. And uh, a couple of his fellow countrymen uh, got into the final. I'm sure he would like to have been in there with them. Yeah, well, these are two riders who Wolfenden has worked closely with as they've uh, come through the ranks with uh, with Great Britain in, in recent years. Lambert, more uh, more experienced, of course, been around uh, internationally since around 2015 or so. Bewley has really come on the scene. When you think that Dan Bewley had mega injuries maybe three, four years ago and has come back better than ever, um, mm. it's really a testament to what he's done. Yeah, the talent obviously is there. And uh, I remember when that accident happened, I sent him uh, good wishes to get going. And I said, I've kind of been there myself in the past. So keep positive And sure enough, it's paying off. He's, um, he's gone out there and uh, pursued his career. And he's got himself in a very, very good position. Got lots of support with a good club. Um, hopefully, he'll, he'll get bigger and bigger in, in, the, in the game. Um, that's what his ambition is. He says you got to be patient and let things kind of come your way at the same time. Put all the pieces in the best way you can forward and your chances are going to be there to reap the rewards. And right now he's in the final and he didn't get his first uh, choice. Well, he didn't look with gate three and I think we've all lost track of exactly what went on there. But uh, but let's uh, let's confirm it across the lineup with Robert Lambert there off the inside gate in the red helmet colour. Patrick Dudek will be in blue. Dan Beauty will be in white and Bartosz Marzik will be in yellow. Monster are the uh, sponsors of the grand final and uh, Lambert inside, Dudek gate two, Bewley gate three and Smarzik off the outside gate. You think Bartosz is happy there to, to get gate four? I think he is and I think Mother Nature's um, left us alone enough to where there's a little bit of uh, moisture in the dirt on the top side of there from a little bit of showers had earlier. If he doesn't make a good start he can go straight for the dirt, um, pull it hard but Lambert being on that inside he could be the one that could uh, mess him up if he gets out in front of him. I believe, um, from what I've seen so far, that uh, Bartos has got a little bit more speed than Lambert, but Lambert's been very clever at putting his bike in the right place at times. But Dan Bewley's been sneaking up the inside there, and Patrick Dudick has come on good late, so this is a really, really tasty final. Yep, interesting way to head Don't forget Dudek has won his last three races to finish on 11 points. Lambert won three races. Marzik won three races. Bewley, then on gate three, won four races. Four wins and a second. Here we go with the final of Ty Wolfenden's testimonial. It's been a really enjoyable, uh, eventful evening. And here we go with Lambert, Dudek, Bewley and Marzik for tonight's grand final. Green light comes on for the referee. Tapes go off and away they go. And Robert Lambert makes a good start there from the inside. Marzik gets squeezed out. Lambert lead. Bewley comes steaming through and moves out. Dudek who's forced to go back to the outside in blue. And Dudek takes real speed into Ben's Three and four, and here comes Marzik trying to split the pair there. Goes through into third, but Lambert kicking on out in front. He made it from the inside gate, and it's uh, Dan Bewley in second place. It's Marzik in third. It's Great Britain 1 2 here. Wow, that's very, very good. Lambert had to be ruthless in that first corner and chase the fastest line right there. I thought that for sure that Marzik was going to be doing the same thing, but it's really good to start. Yeah, Robert Lambert over uh, Dan Bewley. Smarzik tried the outside run on the uh, third pen. Bewley lifting as he tries to make ground on Robert Lambert. Smarzik closing in once again. And Dudek can't make too much impression. Marzik trying on Bewley. One lap to go, but very good here for Robert Lambert. Lambert leads from Bewley. Marzik trying, trying, but he won't make anything there. And Lambert made the start off the inside gate. They've all been scrapping away behind him, but Lambert's controlled the race. And in time, we'll this testimony of Michigan Rock Lab. It's Robert Lambert on top. Lambert wins it. Bewley is second. Marzik is third. Dudek missing out. And Robert Lambert wins the meeting. 5-1 GB over Poland. <laughs> is that a sign of things to come? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? 5-1, 7-2, whatever it was. Robert Lambert is the winner of the meeting of the Ty Wuffenden 10-year testimonial. And fair play. Obviously, he got, got back up after the crash with Gleb Chuganoff, and he's come away with the victory. Dan Bewey has been superb all night, but uh, you'll get confidence from winning a big meeting, won't you? And Robert Lambert's done just that, and there's Beauty with him as well. And uh, Bartosz Marzik gets the third spot. And, uh, well, 
Ty Wuffin and Kung win his testimonial, but uh, probably happy that uh, two Brits have come one too. Uh, Absolutely. At, at I didn't see that coming, to be fair. You know, uh, in the mid 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 um, event, I didn't see Robert Lambert going to be the one that was going to be the shining prize at the end of all this thing. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, Dan Bewley, um, you know, definitely looked good and was going for it, but uh, really good to see that uh, Lambert picked it up. Well, I'll let you uh, make your move because I think you're going to try and uh, try and grab Robert. Um, as we uh, get the riders uh, off track from the final but so uh, well done to everyone involved uh, there was going to be a, a great big after party i'm sure um, celebrations and uh, i think a rather unusual uh, roster presentation as well to come and robert lambert will be on top of that one we saw him win the speedway euro championship in 2020 when he really had to handle the pressure in a big final with uh, leon manson handled that pressure in a difficult year the covid year and uh, lambert uh, coming through there to win the final Dan Bewley in second place uh, Bartosz Marzik was third let's hear once again from Ty Wuffenden with Sam I got the man of the moment right now alongside me Ty tremendous event you put on really congratulations everything you put together it's been a big buzz all the way good nice to see Robert Lambert and Dan Bewley both coming through on that one for sure see the our British boys on the on the top of the podium is, is nothing short of amazing and um, yeah like I said before, like you look at that crowd, man. And, like I'm stoked that I could pull it off. Um, you know, after the first two weeks of sales, I was thinking, "Fuck, there's not going to be anyone here." Um, but yeah, they they came out in force. So uh, you know, can't thank anyone that was either watching the live stream or, or here on the night. Um, yeah, amazing. I'm looking forward to seeing what pay-per-view numbers we did. I know everybody loves you, bud, and I love you too. And I think everybody here loves you. They've all uh, came out to support you. And I'm kind of getting choked up a little bit with you because I know it meant a lot for you to do put this off and you've done a really good job, bud. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Peace out, guys. We'll be on the monster stage. Uh, well done to Ty once again for all the efforts. Let's confirm the result then of the, the grand final as uh, Robert Lambert does the burnouts on the uh, main straight. As we said, it's a big win for him and another uh, big one in his career with lots more to come with the Grand Prix. As the season continues, Robert Lambert, the winner of the Ty Wuffenden testimonial, winning the grand final, Dan Beauty in second place, and Bartosz Marsmarzik in third over Patrick Dudek. A good way to finish off there, Sam. Absolutely. I'm, I'm really, really, really pleased for everybody that's been involved with this thing. And uh, when it comes down to it, look at how hard Lambert came out of that start. Now, he didn't have it all his own way to get in that first corner. He knew he's going to have to go make a choice. Do I stay low? Do I go high? He chose to stay down low and he pulled away from that. The rest of the boys went up to the high line right there, and it was just such a good, good, good call for him to stay down low right there. And Schmarzlik, I thought, was for sure going to be the one that was going up in the dirt, but it was Dudek that went up there and mixed it up. Well, Robert Lambert uh, started his uh, evening jumping out of a plane and ended it, uh, will end it, on top of the podium uh, here in Roslav. And, of course, this was the venue where he had heartbreak in the Speedway of Nations in 2018 when Great Britain lost the final, um, when had, had dominated all weekend and lost the final. So great for him to come back to this place and win a big individual meeting. He is the man of the evening in winning that final. Super effort by Robert Lambert and uh, heading up a British 1-2 along with Dan Bewley as well. So great night's nice work. We have the meeting winner, uh, Robert Lambert, uh, down there. He's in the pits and let's join Sam. You did it! You did it! <laughs> well, after uh, Scott dove into the stadium, it was pretty, pretty hard to keep a focus. But uh, yeah, we uh, won a meeting, and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool to uh, have won Wolfie's uh, meeting. So uh, yeah, over the moon, really. Yeah, I can imagine. So Dan Bewley did an excellent job there to fight his way to get second place. But that start you made off the inside, what was going through your mind when you made the start? Inside high or what? Um, yeah, I didn't want to run too wide, and then. Um, and then they cut back off for four or three, but um, yeah, just get there enough to, to block them down the straight and uh, and then build my speed up from there. But uh, I didn't really go off a, off the inside line, and uh, Dan was really pushing. I didn't see him that fast, really, but uh, yeah, we managed to keep him front. I really didn't see that coming. I'm really pleased for you to go out there and do the job and bring Great Britain trophy back, Ty Wilson's trophy back to Britain. Exactly. So. Uh, a, a British guy is me and uh, a British guy who want to have much better. Don't drink too much champagne. No, no, we're, uh, <laughs> we're going to be on the road soon. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well done, Robert Lambert. Yeah, they'll be on the road to uh, to their home match uh, against uh, Legendary for Torren on, on Sunday. But goes into it, uh, certainly you got with a, 
Big result there, just appeared that uh, Dan Pui did just uh, edge at the start there in that final, which just possibly cost him. But Robert Lambert saying he didn't feel he had all the speed, but he certainly had all the speed he needed uh, in that final to uh, hold back the challenge of the ones who were, who were thrusting from behind. And these are some of the boys you're going to be seeing in, uh, in Grand Prix for years to come. The way that uh, Lambert and Bewley are really adapting to racing at that level and, and showing they belong in these big races. And, and that's, the, that's the key thing that Great Britain have not had for, for so many years. And, and Great Britain have now got two riders who are doing it. You know, experience um, goes a long way when, you, when you're out there and you're battling with um, these types and these competitive riders and different kinds of tracks and stuff like that. Gaining all the experience is only just going to help you um, succeed. And, and I believe both of those guys are really the real deal when it comes down to want to improve their, their abilities, learn. Poland is just um, given so many, so much of the British riders, especially Dan Bewley, uh, Ty Wolfenden showed that he's given something back here tonight by, by giving this big event to his fans and everything. But Dan Bewley and Robert Lambert both, well, I'm sure will follow footsteps in knowing that that's what it takes to become successful and be good at what you do. Robert said there that, that he didn't uh, have the speed perhaps that he thought he might have uh, in the final, uh, but he had enough speed, didn't he? He was able to control the race whilst the others were, were strapping behind him. You know, he said that uh, when I interviewed him there, I kind of got the sense that, you know, I told him I wasn't expecting him to come out and be the one that was going to be the big winner. But he pulled out of the start and he stayed down low and his best chances was just to cover his ground. He had just enough speed to get himself out in front and just hold on to that. He said, I felt Dan Dooley. Um, I wasn't sure if he was going to come in or out of me, but I wasn't going to give my line up. Just some of what we've seen this evening, Sam, we've saw obviously lots of top stars. It's a shame that um, the two that, that crashed out last night, Mikkel Mickelson and uh, Anders Thompson, couldn't be with us. But we still had loads of Grand Prix riders, former world champions and so on. So it was a, a top lineup, and they, they certainly they certainly put on a show, didn't they? Yeah, the stage was there for them, wasn't it? Vratsov is a, is a great racetrack. It's got a good history now. It's dating back for many, many, many years, uh, bringing up top riders and, and more to come. Um, I, I'm sure there was a handful of guys that would have liked to have been a part of this event. Um, but um, he's got a, he had a really good combination of riders out there and it was very entertaining. Right to stay with us and and a, uh, a reminder, we will be seeing uh, the prize giving uh, shortly. Yeah, if you no, just to stay on the stream, we're waiting the for stage. the riders to go down to the monster stage where the presentations yeah, will be show, taking place. It, yeah. So if you stay on the, yeah, on the stream, we will have that. It down. looks pretty... Uh, pretty radical it's not the kind of podium you tend to expect in uh, in major events but then did you expect anything else from this one um because i think the discos are already started so um they're going to be welcoming the top three and of that. i got a yellow wristband here dave and i got one in my uh, uh jacket there for you oh, thank which you very gets much. you into the party so very, and hopefully very the boys in the truck get one too <laughs> I'm, I'm very pleased to hear it very pleased um what what's the future for ty in your opinion sam he's won three world titles he's you know, he's done very well from the sport. The sport's done very well from him. Is he going to come back now and really challenge for big honours? I think he's um, he's got all of it there now. He's, um, you know, he's got Peter Adams still mentoring him as far as the business side of it goes when it comes to focusing on what you have to do to achieve winning big races and stuff like that. So I don't think there's any signs of him not wanting to continue the, the norm. And for him, the norm is being on top of things. And, and you can't but think this has been a bit of a distraction um, for him to go out there and perform it the best he can be there's still a lot of racing left for him in the grand prix he can still come back and pick some of the pieces up um, his future probably looks pretty darn bright i know his last um, league meeting which was here last sunday against london he started off with two last places which is just like unheard of and it's got to be in the back of your mind that you've done it you've been there organized these events has to be something in your mind to say this coming thursday there's a lot of people expecting me to put a show on when you when you're in when you're in that frame of mind, you don't ever think that you're you're giving something up. You want to be giving. So he would have always denied that he was um, suffering from this. But looking back, he probably will look back and say this probably did cost me a bit, but it was worth it. Well, the highlights, the the, the podium, I should say, is uh, coming shortly. The uh, the top three. In the meantime, we have had a really enjoyable, entertaining night. Sit back and enjoy some of the highlights from here in Rostov.
Donut celebrations then for Robert Lambert after his victory in the final. Several images from the night. Obviously, the skydiving at the start was uh, was pretty spectacular. Uh, I guess that was one of Ty's spectacular moments. The other one was the crash on the on the third bend, and uh, the recovery from it was actually quite remarkable. How quickly he got up, and then he said to you, "It doesn't look like it went right to stay down." It doesn't does not approve of riders taking advantage and milking the fact that they've gone down and possibly hurt himself. If you're not hurt, get back up. And he proves that he does practice what he preaches. Very much so. Yeah, that was a, uh, a big moment. So we saw some good stuff from the likes of Patrick Dudek, who's had a, a good run in recent weeks and put himself really into into Grand Prix contention. So he's performing well at the top level. Seen again that Bewley and Lambert are really be belonging at this level. So yes, Miles like is, I think everyone would say, the top man at the moment. But sure. there is more to come. And uh, have a look at this. Uh, big preparations are being... Uh, And uh, hopefully we're going to see the, uh, the top three uh, on the night coming on to the podium to be presented. I think the first going to be uh, a little bit of a selfie with the crowd behind the uh, the monster stage, and it just shows you the uh, the appetite, the desire for speedway in this part of the world. And when you have a big hero at your club, who's been here for for ten years. It was in your interview actually with Monster Joe, um, Sam, that, talking about how riders don't tend to stay at the same club for long. There are a few miles that goes with Gorge off, um, but uh, for someone to be at the club for that long, and uh, yeah, year after year. There's uh, some royalty on both sides there, and then when you get that reaction from the fans, that's uh, yeah, he's really paid back. And the emotions that Ty is going through right now, I can tell you, he's holding back tears. Um, it's pretty difficult for him at the uh, to to hold it back, I'm sure. But it means so much to him. He's a genuine guy. You know, he's a family man. Um, he knows what it means to uh, share, and um, his uh, world championships, his uh, winning league titles, is continuous winning races to prove to his fans that he's loyal to them as much as they are to him it's uh this party's going to go on for a little bit i'm sure yeah he's uh, i think uh, organizing the uh, the presentation uh, if he'd won the meeting he'd been organizing the presentation but um yeah hopefully we'll see the boys uh, shortly here we go here's bartosz marzik double world champion you can talk the language with all understanding. This is true. This is true. And, uh, but again, a measure of the of the respect shown that these are world championship rivals. There's also club rivalry with, with, with Gorjov and, and Roslav, but uh, the undisputed top man of Gorjov is, is come across here to, to put a show on for the, uh, for the fans and for Amphotoy. He's really developed into a good ambassador for the sport as well, not only the way he rides the bike, but the way he rides the to wherever he goes next in this uh, unusual representation ceremony. They can't let the hair down, can they? No, they're still right now at the ball. Let's see. Let's see. Let's 
Yeah, yeah it's um, well, it's non-stop, isn't it? And, and um, slotting this uh, this meeting in uh, in amongst. Uh, I think we're going to have some singing. Don't forget, these two have fought out world championships. And uh, some unscheduled karaoke is uh, He's quite in uh, Yeah, I didn't know whether, whether you could. Uh, yeah, he might have joined us. Uh, there he goes. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. So, Bartosz Marzik on the uh, on the uh, the rostrum with uh, with third place and. Uh, <laughs> Krzysztof Czerniewski, well Krzysztof Czerniewski, właściciel firmy Płomyk. Dziękujemy he, bardzo he Panie Krzysztofie his, za uh, tę przyjaźń z Tajem Ofindenem, uh, za przyjaźń z Żużlem. Krzysztof Czerniewski, firma Płomyk. Dziękujemy bardzo. Miejsce drugie w finale. Ty puts it the adrenaline. He says Ty says he doesn't really get as much out of it as he uh, in the speedway game as he as he wants. He needs more, and uh, skydiving is his fix. Great Britain riders who finished at one two will be shortly making their way to join Bartosz Marzek. Dan Bewley, what a uh, story he is and uh, what a, a season he's enjoying and very much Dan a respected Bewley member of the upper echelon of the sport now. He's coming to the Grand Prix uh, after the circumstances with the, uh, with the uh, Ukrainian invasion and the fact that uh, a couple of key riders uh, were not able to take their place. But uh, Dan Bewley has certainly made himself uh, a more than adequate member of the series uh, with what he's doing particularly in the last couple of rounds. And every time we see him racing against good riders, we see him uh, winning races. So, Rises to the occasion, doesn't yeah. he? He's actually a uh, good temperament. Got that time. Yeah, very much so. Keeps his feet on the ground. Never gets too carried away. But uh, he's always good to talk to. And um, look at that one. Yeah. He's going to need a jetliner to get the first place on the hook, I bet, Robert. Yeah, that's 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 Every year he adds something to his game. Every time you see him, he's a bit better, a bit better. Clearly takes on information learning. Uh, and really, really impressive. Here's the man who came through and won it. Uh, we've seen him win big races in the past. And uh, the mentioned uh, in break four years ago in the Speedway Nations at this venue. But he's come back and won the final. Of, uh, won his testimonial. And, uh, of the, uh, of the, uh, the red helmet colour at the inside gate. And, uh, Lambert, who's uh, a man who you don't always see get, getting too carried away, but I think we remember when he won the uh, European Championship celebration on, on that night. And um, there is the winner's trophy. Mm, very, very nice. Yeah, he's very, he's very collective, is uh, Robert Lambert, and I think he's very precise too. From uh, I've talked to some of the people that are closer to him. Uh, I mean, I thought I was pretty close to meet him, but I'm not on the phone call with him all the time. And I know some of the guys that are, and he says he's always thinking and doing things the best he can and as thorough as he has to be um, to make sure he's on top of the game. Now we find out the uh, the winner's prize, <laughs> and there we go for uh, for Robert Lambert. And, um, there we go. GM engine prize winner, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good on him. If yeah, that's who I think it is, that's um, uh, Leon, uh, Giuseppe's son. Um, 
Zgubił się dziewięcioletni chłopiec. Has uh, gone on as Ty leads the, the celebrations, but like I say, yeah, an event on the night it certainly was, and uh, we've, we've got plenty of time. Absolutely, I mean, just uh, to get here and uh, put the schedule in, everybody had to do on this midweek thing, which is a holiday here in Poland. Ty uh, uh, timed it right, and he got a lot of fans here with big support, and um, I'm sure the celebrations will go on throughout the night. I know he's keen to uh, try and carry on drawing the sport and uh, banging the message out, and. Uh, as far as Great Britain are concerned, with a couple of uh, youngsters uh, doing so well, then the, the prospects for that are there as well. And, uh, hopefully they will continue to, uh, to make big progress, but uh, if they're going to, then the man on the right there, Bartosz Marzek, is certainly one who they're going to have to uh, to watch out for. We're going to have the, the champagne celebration. And the girls go on. This is why the party's been put underneath the caps of the monster drink. Uh, <laughs> there they go. Yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how much that will be being drunk, but uh, well, someone's in the crowd already. So was that Robert? I think uh, ended up in the crowd. Uh, so, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Dan Bewley as well. So uh, yeah, good stuff there. Okay. We ended up to nice painting. So uh, yeah, tremendous nights uh, entertainment. So semi final. Your final thoughts on what we've seen? You can, you'll note that the uh, the lights have gone out in the pits, but but we're still here. And we're still uh, we've, here. We've enjoyed the evening. We've done uh, we've done as much work as anybody has. I'm sure not as much as Ty has put this whole thing together, and you did a great job on it, and right. I thoroughly enjoyed okay. it. Well, you did a great job running around the pit, so well done for okay. that. You got loads right. of uh, so reaction as the Safe evening enough. went on. So congratulations to our winners, our top three of uh, Bartosz Marslik and Dan Beely, and especially our winner, Robert Lambert, and especially our testimonial man, Ty Wolfenden, for a tremendous night's entertainment here at Rosloff. We hope you've enjoyed the action. We hope you've enjoyed the streaming throughout the night, and we hope you enjoy Speedway for the remainder of the campaign. From me, Dave Rowe, and Sam Malenko, it's a very good night. We'll see you soon. See ya.